do you pass up the opportunity to spit blood in Joan Baez's face? Face, face, face. <laughs> Hey, what's happened? I'm Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast. Folks, uh, you know that feeling you get when you have like a maybe a long weekend? Let's call it a long weekend. Say you got a, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Or, you know, let's go with Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Let's call it that. Nah, you know what? I'm going to include Monday in the analogy here. Let's say you have uh, a Friday off. Somehow there's a holiday. Like the 4th of July is a Friday. Let's call it that. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You wind up with a long three-day weekend, and what do you do on Thursday? You're just dawdling. You're sitting there waiting. All you want to do is go ahead and participate in that three-day weekend. You're not even thinking about work that day. Thursday is always, uh, Thursday's a fucking waste. You're sitting at a desk. You're sitting in a cubicle. You're on an assembly line somewhere like our friend David in Detroit. You're doing something interesting, yet uh, something you hate because you're trying to do it because you got to make money. That's the only reason you do that job. But Thursday's a waste because you're waiting for your three-day weekend because Friday is going to be full of fucking swimming pools and movie stars and beer koozies and fucking steaks on the grill. And you're excited. Or, you know, we can, we can extrapolate this to a Thanksgiving. Or, yeah, you know, Thanksgiving's a much better analogy. Let's put it that way. Thanksgiving's a Thursday. And a lot of people get Friday off as well. So they get Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's a four-day weekend. Holy Jesus Christ. What are we, Germans? What are we, fucking Finnish? What are we, Norwegians, with all this vacation time? I and mean, we marinate in it? We enjoy our lives? No, you got to be on the grindstone, baby. Nose to the grindstone, getting it done usually, but that's why that's why these four-day weekends, these three-day weekend extravaganzas that come few and far between are so enjoyable, so, so welcome, so exciting, and, and, and you marinate in them. You love them. You just And then you bask in them, and then, of course, it's time to go back to work. There's the drudgery. There's the... Well, I've got to have my suits back from the cleaners, or I, I need to be ready to wake up early, or I better not uh, imbibe too much uh, because I got to get back to the grindstone tomorrow. Because it's all about the grindstone, isn't it, folks? It's all about going ahead and charging ahead and charging forward and getting it done and making the money that you have to make and making your life, uh, I don't want to say better, but at least being able to participate in life. You got to have money, you got to have a job, you got to do all those things, right? Right. But you know that feeling. Like I said, if you got Friday on the Friday's the fourth of July, you got Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, and uh, and Thursday's a waste. It's right in the bin because you, you're just thinking to yourself, oh, "Holy fuck! Tomorrow, I'm gonna get up. There's gonna be fucking fireworks. It's gonna be sun. I'm gonna walk around in shorts all day. I might not even put on a fucking shirt. Tomorrow might be a shirtless uh, Friday. It might be a shirtless fourth. I might ring in the stars and fucking stripes, the red, white, and blue, and everything else with no fucking shirt on, baby. How you like that? You know what I do? I show my nipples to the world in honor of patriotism. That's how I handle my 4th of July, baby. I fucking take it off. I strut around. I very carry, I, I put on some unfortunate flip-flops so people see my feet and they're disgusting, but that's okay because it's fucking America. That's what we're celebrating on the 4th of July. We're all excited for the fact that we have freedom, the freedom to go ahead and show our nipples and our disgusting toes to the world as we cook steaks or ribs or chicken or hot dogs or hamburgers or bratwurst or baseball and hot dogs and apple pie and Chevrolet and whatever the fuck else you want to have on the goddamn 4th of July. But it's important because you know what? It's a holiday. And it's not even about fucking America. Let's not even talk about America yet. I'll get there. Oh, I'm getting there. Don't fucking kid yourself. But don't talk about America in that context. It's all about just being off. Nobody, look, uh, unless you're a fucking lunatic, and, and believe me, we're finding out there are so many more fucking lunatics out there than we thought. Jesus Christ, what a... What a pile of fucking lunacy we have going on in the fucking world right now. I can't even, oh, fuck it. I can't, I won't say that I can't even express it because that's all I'm going to do is fucking express it because I am, I just, I got spun up and got my dick knocked in the dirt by fucking America this week and I don't fucking understand it. I don't get it. I don't know what the fuck is happening. I, I and we'll get to that. But my point is the 4th of July isn't really about America. Nobody wakes up in the morning and goes, oh man, what about the Boston Tea Party? Wasn't that fucking awesome? And then makes a steak. Nobody in their, nobody in their right mind, I don't think anyway. It's like these holidays, it's just a time off work. That's all it is. Literally, it's time off work, which is, which is why it was so ridiculous when they were trying to make Martin Luther King's birthday a, uh, a, a holiday and people voted against it, like uh, s- senators or whoever the fuck in Arizona. And I was just like, you, man, you got to really, really hate black people to vote against a day off work. I mean, that's all we want is a day off fucking work. Nobody, I mean, look, no offense, Martin Luther King, uh, certainly a, 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 an unbelievably 
uh, important historical figure. And we want to celebrate his birthday. Go ahead. But honestly, even on that day, you wake up and all you do is you think, ah, I'm off work today. Nobody goes, I have a dream. Everybody goes, you know what? I'm going to stay in bed and maybe I'll dream again. That's what they think. Nobody thinks about waking up in the morning. There's nobody who wakes up on MLK's birthday. And uh, all right, this might be privilege showing. And look, I hate that I even have to say that fucking sentence, but that's the world. Perhaps the African-American community does celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday and they have, uh, I don't know, maybe they have a cake. Maybe they, uh, they, anybody named James or Earl or Ray or any combination thereof gets pummeled into the ground and they should. Oh no. Well, don't pummel any James Earl or Ray you run across. <laughs> Find James Earl Ray himself. Go ahead and take that guy out. But don't, let's, all right. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to throttle down. Let me back up. Don't beat up a James and Earl or a Ray or any combination. Don't find Earl James and kick him in the chest. Don't find Ray Earl and beat him up. No, that's none of their guys' fault. Nobody's guilty by association. However, if you want to go conversely the other way and you want to celebrate anybody named Martin or Luther or King or anybody with a combination thereof, then by all means do that. Let's make it positive. Don't smoke the James Earl Rays. Just uh, be happy about the Martin Luther Kings. But that was three on three crime, wasn't it? Now that I think about it, holy shit, I never really, I never put that together because there was always like, and Lee Harvey Oswald, John F. Kennedy, fuck, three on three crime dominates this country in the 60s. What the fuck, man? Uh, who killed Malcolm XX? Uh, that was Malcolm's 19th son. He was the son of a 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 son. Count them. I think he did the math right. Uh, no, I didn't. Perhaps I did. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I can't go back. Now I want to edit. Now you know how fucking mad I am at myself because I totally wish I'd done the math correctly in my fucking brain. He was the son of a son of a son of a son of a son, son of a son of a son of a son of a son, son of a son of a son of a son of a son, son of a son of a son of a son of a son. There you go. How about that? Now I did the math correctly. That's a lot of sons. You just got sunned, son. Um... But nobody wakes up on a holiday and thinks of that holiday for what it is. Nobody wakes up on Thanksgiving and goes, woohoo, let's have fucking dinner with some fucking Native American dudes. Hey, how you doing, Cochise? Enjoy this corn. Nobody fucking does that. People are just like, yay, we're off work. Let's have turkey with my grandmother and try to have my uncle stop being racist for five minutes. That would be fantastic. What's this? Football? I'm enjoying it. Oh, my God, three games of football? I don't know. I have to talk to my wife again. That's what a lot of people are like. Uh, but that's what you do. You don't celebrate. Nobody celebrates the holiday for what it is. Nobody, no, there's no flag day bullshit where someone's like, you're a grand old flag. You're a high flying flag and waves it around and dances around like the fucking kid and where the wild things are around the fire with his fucking monster friends. Nobody dances and celebrates the flag. They just have a goddamn beer and they think, oh, I'm happy. I'm off work. Their holidays mean nothing except for time off work. Nobody pauses and reflects. Nobody just goes, ah, man, you know what? It's the 4th of July. Let's think about those Boston Tea Party assholes, huh? What do you say? Let's do that. (laughs) Let's go ahead and think about fucking uh, the British are coming guy. Who's that dude riding his horse around warning the rest of us? Because that's what the 4th of July is. We signed a piece of paper and everybody decided, you know what? Uh, All men are created equal except for those black dudes. That's exactly what happened. They signed the piece of paper. There was a three-fifths rule in there. And then 40 acres and a mule showed up and everybody else got mad. And now guess what? Still litigating that now. Even when those dudes signed a piece of paper back then. And now here we are 400 years later. and Everybody's still fucking arguing about it. 400 seems high. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll release it. Actually, you know, maybe I'll sit on my dick a little more this fucking day and I'll release this in a hundred years. Uh, or uh, you know what? I'll release it in a hundred thousand years like kiss. Um, but again, nobody celebrates a holiday. Nobody goes, nobody, I, nobody has a cake for Jesus on Christmas. Nobody, at least no fucking sane person. If you have a Jesus cake, just, just spin off the fucking planet and leave the rest of us alone. Oh, although bullshit. You know what? Here's what I say. If you want to have a Jesus cake, go ahead. But the thing is, don't tell everybody else not to have a fucking Jesus or that they have to have a Jesus cake. That's all. Live your life. Be cool. As I've said a million times, you know, it's like if, if people want to have a fucking cake for Allah, I don't know when his fucking birthday is that fucking dude. I don't even know if you liked cake. You might not have been a cake guy. Jesus might not have been a cake guy. Jesus is eating fucking Weetabix and goddamn, uh, uh, you know, whatever the fuck mead. I don't know what they drank back then. That's how he handled his parties. You know what? Have you ever, if you're going to have a birthday party for Jesus, it better be fucking uh, time specific. You need to have everybody needs to be wearing fucking sandals. And again, showing your toes to the world, which is disgusting. Wearing sackcloth. Uh, there better be whores and there'll be one fish and one bottle of wine. And he fucking turns that into everybody. He may feeds everybody in the goddamn joint. That's a Jesus birthday party. And there ain't no party like a Jesus birthday party because a Jesus birthday party has no fucking food for everybody. <laughs> it just don't stop. He keeps turning fish into fish into fish and water in the fucking wine. Um, 
All right. So the thing is, my point is when you have those holidays, when those are lurking, when they're there waiting for you and you think to yourself, I can't wait for this holiday. Nobody's going, oh my God, I can't wait for the 4th of July so I can celebrate the Declaration of Independence. Nobody. Nobody is thinking, holy fuck, Thanksgiving is coming up. I cannot wait to go find Squanto and give him some fucking orange corn. Nobody is fucking doing that. Um, they're just thinking the time off work. Let's go get some soda and some Triscuits and some, some, let's make some fancy dips and enjoy our time off and watch football. That's how they handle their lives. Halloween. Nobody's thinking to themselves, oh, let's find a ghost. Actually, bullshit. Everybody's thinking that on Halloween. I'm fine. I'm thinking that on fucking, I'm thinking that now. <laughs> Holy fuck. The middle of July. Hey, let's find a ghost, man. Uh, Halloween. Actually, you don't get Halloween off work, do you? You should. No, it's actually, they go the other way. They give you that. It's just like, it's basically a fuck off day where you can show up at work in your fucking Halloween costume and ruin everybody's day. Some guys, because inevitably some guy shows up in blackface. You're like, oh, you idiot. It's not Martin Luther King's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how you doing? All right. Uh, um, that guy's a jag up. Ruins it for everybody. Then there's no costumes the next year because one dude showed up in blackface. Way to go, dummy. How does that continue to happen? How do people continue to wear blackface? You'll see it now. Like there's always something on Twitter or Instagram or some shit that some kids showed up in blackface at a football game or whatever. And, and everybody's just like... What? And, and my favorite part is the people who defend it. That's the thing that drives me out of my, my fucking tree. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but that's the shit that's going on now. All these people are fucking, they climb out of their racism cave and, and, and they just go, hey, what? The sun's out. It's time to do this again. Hey, hey, black guys, we hate you. I mean, what the fuck? Where are you from, man? Holster that instinct. Go live your life and be cool to your kids and understand that everybody's just trying to get through this life in one fucking piece, all right? Nobody in their fucking right mind is is hating anybody. Don't hate anybody. I mean, you can hate the guy who cut you off in traffic. That guy's a fucking stroke. There's no doubt. But let that hate dissipate. Otherwise, you're just going to fucking kill yourself, man. All you are right there at that point, you're just a beaker full of bile. Just fucking calm your stomach acid and relax. Just realize, you know what, no matter what, if somebody cuts you off in traffic, somebody's a jag off, you want to hate people, that's fine. Hate them in an instant and then let it go away because otherwise you won't be able to celebrate uh, uh, your your three-day weekends next time you're at work. You'll be filled with hate. You'll be too consumed to think about that cool-ass day off you're going to have. Oh, people, blackface, how, why? Why do you make it happen? I don't, I don't get it. I don't just, even if you thought it was okay. All right, here's my thing. Even if you yourself thought to yourself, well, you know, I'm, I'm not doing anything wrong here. I'm just, I'm, I'm in blackface. It's a costume for, for heck's sake. Uh, and then the entirety of the world said to you, hey, that's wrong. And then for some reason now, people dig their heels in and go, I, I don't think it's wrong. I, I read a story on Twitter, and I swear to God, I don't know if this is true. And I, first of all, i got to get the fuck out of Twitter. i got to get the fuck out of Instagram. i got to get the fuck out of all these fucking places. Well, not Instagram. Instagram's just photos. If you lose yourself in there, you're an asshole. Anybody who's judging themselves against Instagram, and that happens. I hear a lot of people are just, they're seeing other people, and they're envying their like their Instagram lives or something like that. And it's like, I, I get that. You know, there's that rat race to keeping up with the fucking Joneses and the Instagram Wilsons and all that fucking stuff. That happens. It happens for us. It's just inevitable that you're going to look at somebody and think to yourself, fuck, I wish I could do that. Yes, we all wish we could do that. But at the same time, you you know, you got to live your life and then try to make it in a way where you can do something like that. I, I don't know. I just don't know. People, there was a story on Twitter in, and it was, uh, and I don't even know, again, you don't know what's true and what's not, but it seemed like this woman, she had a blue check mark. So God, let's believe her, right? I got a blue check mark, so everybody believes me. So why not believe this woman? And she told a story about, uh, she was at a uh, an office or something, and there was a woman getting a, 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 like a performance review on a writing project that she had turned in. And the woman was like 25 or whatever, young. And uh, her boss was reviewing it. And what it is, it's, it's look, if you turn in, your work, it gets edited. People will read it and they will, uh, you know, uh, let's put, when I turned in network stuff, jokes, I think I've told you the worst network note I ever received was there was a red pen through the word donut. And, uh, and this dude wrote, and I'm trying to remember exactly, I, I'm going to screw this up, but it was, uh, he was like, uh, the, the, a Danish isn't a donut, it's a pastry, which by its definition is fried. And I can't believe I'm the one who has to fucking tell you guys this. Like literally that was, that was in the notes. Uh, and that's a guy, actually, that's a dude that I'm still friends with that, that network dude. I haven't, I hadn't seen him in years until this year, but he's friendly and he likes me. But, but when it came time to be the fucking note dude, I mean, he just, he relished it. He red penned the shit out of everything. And again, that thing, correcting jokes and possibly giving you a different punchline. And you're like, all right, there's a reason you wear a tie and I don't. Okay. Cause I know the punchlines, the punchline guy doesn't wear ties. 
the red pen guy wears ties. So you wear your ties and you carry your red pen and let me do punchlines. If you want to correct my grammar, that's and not my grammar because I'm fucking awesome. But if you want to correct the writing's room's grammar, that's fine. If you want to do some niggling fact about how a, a, a Buick Elantra or whatever the fuck isn't really an Elantra but more of a, a Regal, I, that's fine. That's your fu- You're the minutia guy. You're the tie-wearing, red pen-carrying fucking minutia guy. I'm the funny guy. So step the fuck off when it comes to the funny and you can correct my fucking... If I'm dangling a participle, go ahead and tuck it back in for me. Circle it and point it out and give me a C fucking minus. But when it comes to the funny part, that's why they brought me in no reason for you to go ahead and swoop in with what you think is hilarious because guess what you've already it's it's that's out of your pay grade you've you've graduated past the i get to be the funny guy i understand by being the head of the network or whatever the fuck you are you think you're all things to all people and you can find a kind of metal in all this stuff but it's the game show network do me a favor it's the game show network go choose the number font for card sharks could you do that could you just get off my dick please because i know the funny part you guys it was your fault for branching into comedy Okay, why don't you do do me a favor? Go watch a match game rerun and you pick out all of the uh, episodes that Charles Nelson Riley isn't wearing glasses. How about you do that? That's a project for you, motherfucker. How about you find out when Brett Summers was wrong? How about you do that? Go ahead and call her up and tell her that her answer was fucking incorrect. Why don't you go to the skinny microphone museum and red pen the shit out of them for not having a normal goddamn fucking audio system and lead me to the fucking jokes, you prick. Uh, I still have resentment apparently from that. And look at that. It's, it's, it was, it was bubbling just under the surface and here it is. I launch it all over you guys, <laughs> all over you motherfuckers. Um, but that's, that's the thing is when, the, when the people step in with the notes, they go ahead and correct you. And it is humbling, I guess is the word I would use because you, you sit there and you, th- cause you think you did a good job. You know, you've, you've created this and you've turned in your work. So your work is, is finished and you're turning it in and you're, you're hoping beyond hope that they're just going to go, this is awesome. Thanks. And you get to leave. Yay. But if you have to li- literally, like I, let's put it this way. At least I got to send my fucking material to the network and then they sent it back with notes in the margins and shit. Like if I had to sit constantly in a meeting with my boss, I, I had a, I had an issue once with a producer on, on funniest pets and people. I've told this story. I think something happened. I don't even know what the fuck happened. And uh, I, I like busted his balls at lunch. And we and this is the thing. We were all fr- I knew this guy from another show. Like I had be, I had been his friend. He worked on uh, Funny Money, I think. And then all of a sudden he got hired at Funniest Pets and People. And it was just it was cool. It was just that kind of incestuous world where you'd see a guy. You're like, oh, fuck, dude. Good to see you. And he was a great guy. We really got along great. But then something happened at lunch and I made fun of him in front of people or he because he was busting balls. And so I busted his balls back. Now, at lunch, you're not my producer. At lunch, you're just Roy. All right? So guess what, Roy? The needle's out, and you're going to get fucking lampooned. And if you try to fucking come after me, you're going to get fucking nailed. Because that's how I operate. I'm the funny guy, remember? I get to be the punchline guy. And look, we're at lunch, so I guess I've punched out, but it doesn't matter. I, li- you know what? I live my life as punchline guy. That's who the fuck I am. God damn it! You don't even don't even think that I holster that. I'm punchline guy, morning, noon, and fucking night. You wake me up out of a dead sleep. I'm gonna give you fucking three wide the chicken cross the road jokes. That's who I am, baby. I'm Shecky Schmidt. <laughs> so this fucking dude at lunch, I didn't. Even, it was it was like a thing that was like out of nowhere where we were. Everything was fine, I thought, and I fucking zapped him. And then uh, we got back to the office and we had a writing meeting and he was being really shitty to me about something that I wrote and, uh, and I didn't, I didn't like it. So I was just like, all right, well, what the, you know, what the fuck? I sat there and took it because he's the producer now because we're back in the office and I went up back in my office and his office was right next to my office and someone asked me about it. I go, oh, man, I don't know. He just fucking chewed me out. I don't know. I don't fucking know why. I go, you know, and, and I, I groused like you do and he heard me. And he called me into the, his office and I walked in and he goes, you got something to say? And I go, I know. What are you, what are you talking about? He goes, I can fucking hear you. You're in the very next office. I go, well, yeah, you just fucking read me out. So people ask me about it. So I'm talking about how you fucking read me out. He goes, well, maybe, maybe you don't want to be here anymore. Is that what it is? Is that what you, you don't want to fucking be here anymore? If you don't like the way I handle my job. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I go, I, I, you fucking buried me. So someone asked me about it. So I was telling them that you buried me and I didn't agree with it, but I can't. And he goes, well, why didn't you tell me you didn't agree with it? And we were in the fucking meeting. And I'm like, cause I, cause I can't, you're the producer. And he's like, you know what? Get out of here. I go, all right. And he goes out. And I said, fine. I go to walk out of his office. He goes out of the office, go home. You're done. And I'm like, seriously? He goes, yeah, just pack up, fucking go home. So I went into my office and uh, I closed the door 
And the uh, the guy who was my writing partner looks at me and he's like, uh, you okay? And I was near tears because, you know, that at the time, and look, not even at the time, I can't lose a job where I'm making almost fucking four grand a week because I, I, I got into it with a guy over nothing. I mean, it was like, that was the thing. I, I knew, I knew who I could and couldn't fight with, which coming from me is a big deal. As you know, you know me, I'm mouthy and I, I, I occasionally on funny money, I would, I would grip, um, you know, it's because I will be honest with you. There's Mark price was the guy who, who he was my boss on funny money, him. And there was a guy named Steve. And then there was this dude who ran national lampoon. And uh, I got along with them, but I got the job because I proved it with my material. Like the the network fought for me. There was this guy Bob who ran the show, and he he just kept bringing me back in. Like I wasn't their guy. I wasn't the the guys the guys who developed the show. They didn't have me in mind. They had their own favorite comics, but I kept delivering. So they kept bringing me back. And I, and that's not fair to say it was the, just the network. I mean, there was other producers on the show, Pat Finn and these other guys. I uh, look. They just took a liking to me because I'm cool and I was funny and I was funny every fucking time they brought me in. And also I did what I was told because I, it was my first ever gig. And look, I, by the way, if you're hiring, I'll do this now. <laughs> I don't fucking care. I should also say this thing where I'm saying I know who I can and can't fight with. You know who I can fight with? Nobody ever again. I like saying the phrase I went into my office. So that would be really cool to have another office. So somebody hire me and I, pro- I will not fight with you. I promise you yeah, this story is from like fucking 15 years ago. Ignore this story, please. I concentrate on the work I do right now in this moment as I, I get lick spittle all over your boots and I tell you, Hey, I'd be an asset to the team. <laughs> I want to have me in the office. I'll, I'll, I won't touch any of the goldfish crackers and I'll smile in the hallway. How about that? Isn't that enough? I mean, I can go ahead and turn out material and jokes as well, and I'll do it on a, a timely basis for you, he said as his podcast came out at night instead of in the morning. But still, trust me on that. Um, so they would bring me back in all the time. It was the other producers and the, and the network. But then, so then I get the gig, right? I get the gig, and then Pardo's the host, and then I'm, you know, I'm, I have a kind of a Pardo whisperer relationship where he and I would go off, and I would, you know, he would run bits by me. I'd give him, I'd feed him lines to use his ad libs. Uh, it was, it was an awesome arrangement, but then I would turn in material and fucking I, and I'm, I was an arrogant cuss because they brought in, uh, other writers who I, at the time, now I'm not going to say this about now, but at the time I may have, well, fuck this. I, you know, me, I, I'm big dick, funny guy. And, and uh, uh, certainly not literally, but what I'm saying is like, yeah, the, you know, my, I think I'm really fucking funny and I don't mind swinging it around. So like I would write all this material that I thought was really funny and then it would get cut at the expense of some stuff that I didn't think was as funny. And I, uh, was not very mature and didn't understand the job so much. And I mean, I got along really well with everybody, but I would, pout or I would get fucking shitty if I thought my jokes, you know, and again, we all fight for our fucking jokes. Um, but I would feel like, and, and again, it's a, it's the wrong way to be. It's one of the reasons I'm sitting here talking to you alone now, instead of being, I'm never not funny or whatever the fuck else. Uh, I would fight for what I thought was extremely funny. And I would kind of plant my flag and people would say, Hey, maybe you do this. And I would go, oh, I'm doing it this way. And then here I am shouting into a void, which I don't mind. Certainly. And, and and things have changed now where if they just give me a chance again, as I've mentioned, as you're standing in a puddle of my lick spittle again, I mentioned you and your shiny, shiny boots. Why not hire me and give me an office? Wouldn't you want to do that? <laughs> um, no, nah, I was kind of a dick. I won't lie. I mean, we'd be in the office. We'd turn in our bits and then they'd give us the ones they picked for air. And I'd be like, how did that not make it in? How did this not make it in? And I was noisy about it. I'd go to Mark and I'd go to Steve and I'd go to the National Lampoon dude. And I'd be like, hey, uh, this is clearly funnier. This is funnier. This is funny. You should do this. And. Um, you know, they didn't want to fucking hear that. They were all producers and EPs and they didn't want me fighting for my material. And I, it was my first ever job. So I didn't know jokes die. You know, that's the thing is you're just, you're just feeding the wood chipper, man. Whatever the fuck comes out on the other end gets turned into mulch. Well, sometimes they don't feed your shit into the wood chipper the chipper. They're just, and there's other lumberjacks or whatever the fuck. Uh, this is, this analogy could not be more strained. Here's why I don't get writing jobs anymore. Holy fuck. <laughs> I'm going lumberjack, wood chipper, mulch. Uh, the point is there are other people there doing the same job and they all feel the same way about their material as you feel about yours. And you can't fucking Bigfoot them and go to the EPs and go, well, this is funnier. This is absolutely funnier, especially when the EPs have a personal relationship with the writers who you're trying to bypass. So, uh, you learn, 
on your first gig. But the point of it, or the whole thing is, so, that, so I wind up at Funny Spets and People, and this fucking guy gives me the whack, and I go into my office, and I'm ready to fucking lose it. And I just go, he's like, what's up? And I go, I, I, I just got fired. And my co-writer's like, what are you talking about? I go, I don't know. He just, Roy just fucking, he literally told me to pack up and go home. Like, he, he said, I'm done. And he goes, that can't be real. I go, I'm, I, it just happened. He goes, sit down, relax. Don't worry about it. Just hang out. Let it blow over. I go, dude, I don't want this to turn into a fucking circus, and I don't need to get Brad involved. Brad and uh, these guys, Brad and Bill, were like the two kings of the show, and I didn't want them involved. And again, I'm not on set for this show. I'm just in an office turning out material. But it was such a golden arrangement. It was in Burbank. It was close to my house. It was just, it was the money was ridiculous, and uh, and I was good at it. I loved it so much. To get whacked over subtext from lunch, I was like, come on. So I hung out the rest of the day. I didn't leave. And then at the end of the day, the producer walked into my office and he goes, why are you still here? I said, uh, and my co-writer is like, come on, Roy. And, uh, he goes, you just, you got to watch the way you talk to people. I was like, all right. I said, I understand. He goes, you know, he goes, I'm not, he goes, I'm not a hard ass. You know, you can come talk to me about anything. He goes, so and he and he was very nice and very cordial. He didn't apologize, and he still made clear that he thought I was wrong. But he also told me, "Look, man, I like you. I've worked with you before, and so you can, uh, you know, are we cool?" And I and I was like, "Yeah, of course we're cool. Huh? Please, huh?" <laughs> and uh, he said, "Okay, great." And he walked off, and I looked at the the other co writer, and he goes, "I went in and talked to him." He goes, "And I knew that was going to happen, but you handled it good." And I'm like, "All right, fine. I can't even." Yeah, uh, <laughs> and so everything was fine so i understand what it means to sit with a boss and be told well this is wrong or this is wrong or that's wrong or whatever you know you try it's a it's a even now applying for a gig i applied for a gig like four months ago that i thought i had a good shot at and i sent an email and they didn't, they didn't answer me for like four days and so i sent a follow-up email and they were like hey man if we got anything to tell you we'll tell you and it's like oh fuck dude i didn't all right i was i was just following up i thought it was what you do and then, thankfully, that person wrote me later and go, hey, look, I didn't mean to have the short reply. Things are just hectic here, but as soon as we know, we'll let you know. And I'm like, great. Um, so, but it was, it, uh, it's, it's a minefield. But the whole point of me telling you this was uh, <laughs> there was a story I read on Twitter where a woman, she had a young woman and she's reading her, her, her project with her and she's giving her edit suggestions and she's red penning stuff. And I, and according to the woman on Twitter who relayed the story, this woman said, uh, she circled the word hamster because the word hamster was in there. She goes, that's not how it's spelled. That's H A M S T E R. Now there's no P in hamster. And the, the girl, the woman who wrote the project who's again, very young says, well, that's how I spell it. And the woman who's the boss goes, well, I understand that, but that's, but that's not how it's spelled. There's no P in the word hamster. And the, the young woman said, well, that's, but that's how I spell it. So that's fine. And the boss is like, no, no, that's no. And she's trying to get through to her. She's like, it's not, there are spelling rules. I mean, there are dictionaries that tell you how to spell words. Words are spelled a certain way. You can't just spell it because that's, and she goes, well, that's why I've always spelled it. And, and the woman said, I understand that, but it's wrong. And I guess this, this fucking, it, this argument progressed to where the, I mean, the woman, the, the girl wouldn't back down. She was insisting that because that's the way she believes it should be spelled. And that's the way she spelled it her whole life, that it should stay and be uncorrected. And the boss was like, look, I understand what you're trying to go for here. <laughs> and she's trying to be nice. She's like, I understand that you, you, you feel very strongly about this, but I feel very strongly that words are spelled correctly in projects and this is the way it's spelled. And, uh, and again, this woman's relating the story on Twitter. So then it ends, the boss goes back into the, into her office and the young woman slams all of her stuff like on a table and starts crying and then calls her mom on speakerphone and tells her that her boss was mean to her and, and corrected her in front of everybody. And the mom says, oh, well, she just doesn't get it. She doesn't know you, honey. I mean, you're very talented. Maybe this isn't for you. Maybe this isn't where you should be. You should go somewhere where they really appreciate you. And they have a discussion on speakerphone in front of the rest of the office. And she literally says, well, what, was the, what did she say? She goes, well, I spelled hamster. And she, she said it was wrong. And the, the mom says, oh, you know what? 
they're stepping on your creativity. Like you really need to go ahead and find some other place to be, honey. Because and I'm like, and this, this woman said, I was dumbfounded listening to it. And she goes, what was even more dumbfounding is that nobody in the office reacted to it. Apparently they're used to this girl doing this, st- stamping her feet and crying and trying to get her way. But then she has a speakerphone call with her mom and the mom is ripping the office going, yeah, no, they're wrong, honey. You're creative. And if you choose to do it that way, that's the way it is. That's the way it should be. And I, I was like, what the fuck? Like wh- why? Who just digs in their heels and decides to do whatever the fuck they want? Who the fuck gets to go, yeah, no, I spell hamster that way, and that's the way it should stay? Who the fuck goes, hey, I'm just wearing blackface? Well, no, 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 blackface is wrong. You can't fucking do it. Bullshit. I I like boys to men. I want to dress like boys to men. You can't dress like boys to men. You're not boys nor men. Get the fuck out of here. You're a white dude. No blackface. Well, I, I, I hear you say that, but I think it's wrong. What do you mean it's wrong? We're telling you, en masse, as a fucking society, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, but I think it's okay. Just so fucking stay in your house. You know what? Stay in your house and put on blackface and walk all around and look at yourself in the mirror and have a conversation with yourself, motherfucker. Don't fucking tell people what's right and wrong. Live your life and understand there are other people on the fucking planet, man. And there won't be for long. Let's be honest. There will not be other people on the planet for fucking long. I'm rooting for it. I, I, it's funny, Carlin used to say that where he's just like rooting for the end and I, I didn't get it. But now, you know, he wasn't even here for fucking social media. And, uh, and I, you know, I, it's funny, I, I'm back in the car. I, and maybe that's why I'm a sourpuss this week. I don't know. I'm back in the car Ubering. And uh, I tried to go back in the car last weekend. I had to go Saturday. And fuck me, dudes. <laughs> I go to pick up guys. I go to drive and I go out driving. And I, I again, I haven't driven since fucking... December. And that's why I opened this entire fucking thing by saying, Hey, you know, when you have a three day weekend, you don't want to go back to work. Imagine having a six and a half month weekend. Wouldn't that be great? I mean, cause essentially I haven't driven since mid December. So I'm on a seven month vacation, not even vacation, seven month weekend. I'm on a seven month weekend cause I've still been hustling and trying to make money and, and building the Twitch thing and do whatever the fuck I can, but I didn't have to be in the car. It was fine. I had I had a bit of a cushion that I was able to go and use, but now I'm through it. And now, unfortunately, I got to get back in the fucking car because that's life. I get it. That's life. Just like you, uh, if you're working, like I said, our buddy David, who's in, who's in Michigan, if he's got to go back to work after a three-day weekend, he does it because he's got a daughter and a wife. So you got to fucking do. If you, if you take a two-week vacation and then you come back and it's like, you got to go back, you got to go back to work. You got to. I got to go back to work. We all have to do it. It's life. But it doesn't mean that you don't have that fucking gnawing in the pit of your stomach that makes you wonder what the fuck would happen if you didn't have to. What if you won that Powerball? What if you won that Mega Millions? And again, like I said, not even to be rich. I don't need to be the Monopoly guy. I don't need a fucking top hat and a monocle, although I'll wear one with shorts. I don't fucking care. If I'm rich, I'll do all sorts of banana shit. But not because I have to, because I want to. I want to do bananas nonsense. All I'm going to do is here's the thing. I'm going to win. I, I talked about this on the Twitch channel. I'm, I'm going to fuck. If I ever win Mega Millions or Powerball, I don't need, It's not like I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to buy four Maseratis. It's going to be fucking awesome. I'm going to drown in pussy. I mean, look, part of that's true. But what I'm really going to do is I'm going to buy a fucking I'm going to go. First of all, I'm going to go to every state in the union and find every domestic violence shelter and just and just buy them a new fucking whatever they need. I got 10 people in my inner circle and family and friends that I got to take care of. I'll go, what do you want? You want to pay for your kid's college? You want to buy somebody a car? You want to pay off a house? What do you want me to do? You do all that shit. And then, then you turn your eyes to the world and you go, man, there's plenty of sick kids and dogs out there. Let's fucking take care of them. I've talked about this a million times. I just want to have a big fucking Schmidt complex where all the cancer kids can limp out and pet all the happy dogs. That's it. Cancer kids and happy dogs. That's how I want to fucking do it. And first of all, I know that sounds like a lunch cart. It is absolutely not a lunch cart. Do not think that that is a lunch cart. Cancer kids and happy dogs, baby. That's how I want to fucking make my my way in this world. I fuck politics. Fuck giving money to candidates. I mean, I'll give money to Planned Parenthood, certainly. You know what? I'll have an abortion clinic there at Cancer Kids and Happy Dogs. I'll have Cancer Kids, Happy Dogs, and abortion on tap. Let's call it that. Let's fucking go with that. We'll give out free condoms. We'll give ladies advice. We'll do whatever the fuck people need. We'll take care of women's health. Any sick people or poor people, I'll have another camp for homeless dudes. They'll show up and they'll build like picket fences and shit. They'll take showers. Everybody will have like, they'll eat beans around a campfire and, and, and just recreate the blazing saddle scene. I don't give a fuck. Whatever they want to do. I want to buy ranches. I, you know what? I'm going to get enough money to just buy Montana. Or is that too big? Uh, you know, I got to buy Rhode Island. Well, there's money in Rhode Island. See, there's all fucking wide open spaces in Montana and Wyoming and shit like that. See, that's where nobody will bother me. See, I've often thought, all right, I, I don't know if I venture into this. 
uh, well, I've said this before, I think. Why don't we just give Montana to the Palestinians? Let's let that just, they can come over here and live in Montana, right? Stop having that dumb fight over one fucking postage stamp of land. Or, or the Israelites. Whoever the fuck, Israel people, Jewish people, Palestinians. Let's flip a coin. Let's have a conversation. Whichever of them wants Montana, they can live in Montana. They'll come over. Because there's not that many people who live in those fucking joints. I'm solving the Middle East crisis as we speak, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you remember earlier, I was telling you that uh, I uh, I was a guy who uh, couldn't get a job <laughs> and almost got fired in an office for being mean to a guy at a lunch, or at least funny. Uh, and now I'm going to solve the Middle East crisis for you right here, right now. God damn it, I'm an idiot. All right. Um, back in the car, Ubering over the weekend, I hop in and I didn't want to go, but I did. And the first ride I get pinged for, it was like two o'clock in the morning. So I went, believe me, I pushed it to the very last fucking second. And I went out and I pull up and, uh, I'm a foot away from this guy. Not even six feet, uh, not even a foot, uh, six feet. Eh, it's more than a foot. And this fucking dude is standing there and I see him. He's holding the phone. And this is my first ride again in, in six fucking months other than with friends. And, uh, sure enough, I see him. He sees me. I'm sitting there. He doesn't come over. So I text him. I have arrived and he doesn't answer me and he gets two in the morning. So he could be fucking loaded. I don't know what the fuck I'm getting into, but all I know is again, it's been seven months. So I have to go ahead and reposition myself as being a nice guy and being friendly to everybody. And that's fine. Uh, <laughs> but he won't come over to the car. So then I call him and I see him. He answers the phone. He's six feet away. He's behind me. I go, hi. I this Mike. He goes, yeah. I said, it's your Uber. He says, uh, well, that's not the right car. I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, the Uber app says that you have a black Toyota Camry. I said, well, I have a gold Toyota Camry. He goes, well, also the license plate is wrong. I go, well, that doesn't make any sense at all. I go, but I saw you, you, I said, also, you can see me, right? I waved my hand. I go, I'm the guy in the car talking to you right now, which means I have you on my app and I have your phone number. He goes, yeah, but it's not the right car and it's not the right, uh, it's not, it's absolutely not the right uh, license plate. I go, what's wrong about the license plate? He goes, well, it's one letter off. I go, okay. I go, so don't you think that there might be a mistake somewhere in the app? And he goes, well, regardless, I just, I don't feel safe. I go, all right. Um, you, uh, do you want to take a ride or not? Because again, there's f- you have five minutes to get in the car. And he goes, well, no. I go, all right, well, you need to cancel me then. And you need to take, take another ride. And he goes, okay, fine. I go, all right, so cancel it. And then someone else will come pick you up. He goes, fine. Now, he wouldn't even walk up to the window. If you walk up to the window, my picture is in his phone. He would have seen my face. I would have said, I'm Mike. That's me. And I don't know why the license plate is wrong or what the color is. I, I go, that's obviously a problem with the app. But I, you know, I, I would have explained it to him, but he wouldn't even approach the window. And I, I pitched this to some people in there. It's like, well, you could have been a maniac. You could have just gassed his face. And I'm like, I, that's fine, I guess. But I mean, if you're, I mean, if you're a lady, I totally get it. But if you're a man, like a grown man, just come over and, and talk to me. That's all you need to do is say something, say hi. Just go look at me and I'll look at you. And even if you don't want to get in the car at that point, come up and talk to me and explain why. But to, to be at distance, it just, it just, and again, I, a lot of people said to me, you know, Mike, you're wrong here. He's right for not getting in your car. And that's fine. What I'm saying is come walk toward me and talk to me because then you'll see my face. You'll see I'm me and I'll show you my phone with your face in it and you'll see that you're the right guy. But I, uh, but people were like, nah, man, I wouldn't even do that. Okay, well then cancel it. But he wouldn't cancel it. That was the thing. That was the thing that pissed me off because then I can't get a ride for five minutes. So I'm sitting there waiting. I'm just waiting for him to cancel it. And he wouldn't cancel it. And he's sitting there, which means he also can't order a new ride until he cancels, but he wouldn't cancel because he didn't want to pay the five bucks. But the thing is, if he would have just canceled it, he wouldn't have had to pay the five fucking bucks because he could have just said to them, oh yeah, it was a, it was the wrong colored car. And I would have vouched for him. I would have backed him up. But again, walk up to my car and fucking talk to me, you fucking dick. Um, five minutes goes by. I cancel him. Get the five bucks. I drive off. I get pinged again. I pull up. There's a group of like five women in short skirts. Uh, they're, they're on the corner with like two dudes. It's just a big, you know, they just got out of a party somehow or, or, or out of a bar because it's bar time. And I pull up and uh, I hit the thing again. I have arrived and uh, <laughs> they don't answer. I see them look at the phone. They look at me. They look at the phone. They look at me. They look at the phone. They look at me. So then I call. She answers her phone. I'm right in front of her. And she goes, hello. I said, hi, I'm, I'm your Uber. And she goes, yeah, no, it's, it's the wrong car. I said, look, it's the right car. I don't know what happened, but something's wrong with the app. 
She goes, well, I don't know. And then she starts walking to the car and all her friends go, no, don't, don't. And I'm like, you can see my face. We're in the middle of Ventura Boulevard. It's, 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 there's a ton of people around. I'm not a fucking maniac. What do you think I'm going to do? So the one girl walks over with the phone and she, and I roll the window down and I go, hi, I'm Mike. And she goes, okay, who are you here for? And I, and her name was Katrina. I said, Katrina. And she goes, okay, well, that's me. I said, great. She goes, but it says that your car is black. I go, it's gold. It's still a Toyota Camry. And I go, and I just had a guy and he told me the license plate is wrong. She goes, yeah, it's got one wrong letter. I said, okay, but you see that it's me. And I, and she goes, yeah, no, it's fine. We're going. She goes up. She goes, come on guys, let's go. And all the girls are like, no, man, we're not getting in that car. And the girl goes, it's him. I'm talking to him right now. And they go, no, no, we can't, you know, there's, it's easy to, to, to spoof that. It's easy to fake it. And I go, look, I said, I will give you my phone if you want to walk it over and show them that your name is in my phone. I don't care. Whatever you want to do. I go, but also, if you don't want to do it, go ahead and cancel it. I totally get it. Uh, and she, she goes, no, I'm getting in the car. And if they don't get in the car, you can take me where we're going. So she literally, thank God, she planted a flag and she got in the car. And her friends were like, oh, all right. And they all come over. And uh, they're not all together, but it turned out it was four girls and a man. And the four girls get in the back seat and the man gets in the front seat. And again, in my mind, I'm like, there's a man with you. No offense. Like I, four women, I, like I said, I understand. And maybe this is again, me, male privilege, whatever the fuck, the male gaze. I don't know how you, I don't know what they're calling it these days. And maybe it's wrong for me to think that uh, women should not get into cars with men if they don't feel safe. I just, I feel that that to be is true. Uh, but also if there's four women, that's eight heels that'll get embedded in my skull if I try anything stupid. So I totally, I couldn't, I would, if I would bank on four chicks being available to take me out unless I had the Joker's car and I let laughing gas go off and they all fucking passed out. And then I'm the devil's rejects and I got cheerleaders chained up in my fucking basement. I get it. But if you got a dude with you and he sits in the front seat, well, he's your first line of defense. That guy's going to fuck me up if anything bad happens, or at least he's going to take a poke at me. And if I went up beating him up and then the four of you can run out of the car, he's your sacrificial lamb. Let that guy fucking take a beating. God damn it but instead they all got in the car and they were very nice and they were like yeah see and she showed me the app and i go yeah that's incorrect i'm real sorry about that i go i'm i'm you know i'm the right guy i promise uh and then we were driving and uh this girl they start busting balls in the back seat and she's just and she goes mister i'm sorry i don't know my friend's real short so we needed a car seat for her <laughs> and they all laugh because they're drunk and i go you know what i think the guy with the black car has the car seat and and there was like a pause of silence and I went, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. And they go, ah, ha, ha, and then they all laugh because I guess there was this moment where they all panicked that I was really driving and I was fooling them with a the black car nonsense. Uh, but I took them to where they were going. And then at that point, you know what I did? I went home because I wasn't about to have this fucking argument with everybody all night fucking long. So I went home and I contacted support at Uber and I said, hey, look, I go, the color's wrong on my car and you've got for some, because I looked, they were wrong. They somehow, when they put my new registration in, they they messed up the license plate. They changed uh I'll just say they changed an H to a U. I don't know how you make that mistake, but they did. Uh, I mean, they're kind of close on the keyboard, I guess, if you hit it one way, whatever. So uh, I waited to hear from them. I didn't hear from them all day Saturday. And so then I wrote them again on Saturday because I wanted to drive Saturday night. And then I get a I get a note back. And this dude, I'm not even joking. I get a note back. And the name of the customer service representative is Ichthia. I don't know, I-K-T-H-Y-I-A. I had to write it down to make sure that I remembered it because in my mind, I don't know, I don't know what country that's from. I don't know if you're from, you know, if she was Ichthia L, I'd say she was from Krypton. I, I, I mean, that name makes zero sense. That just, now I think, I don't even think there's any support people at Uber. I think, I think maybe just a cat walks across the keyboard and taps out a note to you and whatever the fuck happens, happens because who the fuck is named Ichthia? Where the fuck is that from? That sounds like a mountain range in the fucking Balkans. Uh, but Ichthia wrote me and she said, uh, well, we'll need a photo of your car to verify uh, the license plate and the color. And I was like, all right. So by this time I, I go outside and it's Saturday night. So I take a photo of the car, I take a photo of the license plate and I send it to her and uh, they don't answer me. Saturday night, they don't answer me at all. And uh, then Sunday, finally I get a note in the morning and she says, please take another photograph. It was too dark to register the color of your car. And I, I, I even wrote back, I go, it's under a street light. I, like, I wasn't even going to take another photo. I was so mad, but I also wanted to get it fixed, but I didn't care. I, for, I took a fucking stand. I go, it's under a street light because there's a, in the carport, there's lights. And uh, she writes back, please take, and literally just repeats the same thing. Please take another photograph so we can verify. So Sunday, 
I went out and I took a picture of the car in the sunlight so you could see it was gold. And I took another picture of the license plate. Even though I sent her the license plate before that, she never quali- uh, commented on that. And finally, Sunday night, she wrote me and she said, okay, we have corrected the color of your car in the app. Thank you so much for being a good driver. And I went into the app and they corrected the color and not the license plate. And, and I'm just like, Ichthia, I, you know, meow, 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 Ichthia, meow, meow, license plate, meow, 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 H, meow, meow, you, meow. <laughs> And uh, so I texted her again and I wrote her another note and not text. It's, you got to write an email and that's why it takes a fucking long. And uh, finally, like an hour later, she wrote me back and she's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. We, we, we've now updated your license plate as well. So then fine. It took till Sunday night. So I lost another day, two days of work. And, uh, and I've, I've driven this week and I, I've driven, uh, I don't, I don't want to, I mean, it's that thing where I keep doing it for like an hour and then I go, you just go home. If I, if I go like 10 minutes without a ride, I'm like, go home. There's nobody out here who needs a ride. <laughs> it's so stupid. That's so false. Um, but I have to fight it. I have to fight that. I have to stay out. I have to make money, especially with me fucking, you know, my whole August I'm off. I am money wise. I don't know what the fuck August is going to look like. That's going to be fun. But uh, so I have to basically drive the rest of July and the beginning of August to, uh, to make all of that work. And look, man, we all got jobs. Everybody's got things they got to do. Everybody's got to go out and spend cash or make cash or whatever the fuck. Uh, I'm, I'm no better. I am no different than you guys, but you know, I do root for the fact that the planet's going to end soon. And then I won't have to be back in the car. That makes me happy. And I know the planet's going to end because I, I, eventually people are going to storm area 51. Did you see that fucking story? People are going to storm. Some guy as a joke, started a Facebook group called, uh, storm area 51 because he said that they have alien technology that they've not told us about. And now there are all these stories of all these kind of like air force pilots who are saying that they've had close encounters or some video that came out last year. And so people are starting to believe that we're being lied to regarding the alien technology. And I'm like, uh, uh, dudes, we're getting lied to about everything. All right. Everything's being lied to uh, or all being lied to. And, and, uh, and you're accepting it. You're okay with it. A lot of you guys support a guy who lies to us every fucking day who I, who, who won't fucking stop. And I don't, I don't fucking get, look, yes, I know where everybody's like, I'm going to do this thing again where everybody's like, well, you know, he's, he, uh, hi, he does it on the libs. He's just, he's just rowdy and revving you guys up with this bull. I, I fuck him. Fuck him, man. How the fuck is this? It's still happening. And then people are with him. That's what I don't fucking understand. He, he, and again, it's Twitter. I know it's just fucking Twitter. It's not the real world, but then he defends it at rallies and in fucking press conferences that fucking go back where you came from bullshit. When he said that to to Ilan Omar and, and, uh, and Cortez and fucking Presley. And, and, uh, it's like, dude, what the, what the fuck go back where you came from. And then, then he has a fucking rally and everybody cheers it. They're all, they all start chanting. They're like, send her back. They're chanting, send her back about Ilan Omar. It's like, dudes, what the fuck is wrong with you? Where are you from? Unbelievable to me that this is what it's become. And I, and yet it's just going to get worse. And I don't even know why I fucking, I shouldn't pay any attention to it. I want, I don't want to pay attention to it. That's one of the reasons I sit in my fucking apartment and just stare. I should just go out. I should go smell flowers and run in the fields and smell newly cut grass and feel the sun on my face and not worry about the fact that a racist is about to destroy everything that we thought that this country could be. Jesus fucking Christ. Send her back. Chanting, send her back. You know, it's the, the worst. that's just the new locker up. People like to chant three word phrases at Trump rallies and that's it. They should be chanting, fuck this guy, fuck this guy. But no, they can't do that. So instead they chant, send her back instead of lock her up. But you know what? Send her back is worse than, fuck her up, uh, than lock her up. Because I'll tell you, they thought their fucking premise was that Hillary was a crook. So lock her up. They just don't like this chick. They just don't like it, little Omar. So they want to say, send her back. That's enough for them. Send her back. We don't like her. We don't like what she says. It's getting so close to just being that fucking rally and Pink Floyd up against the wall, against the wall. Uh, there's one in the spotlight. She doesn't look like to me. Send her back against the wall. What the fuck is wrong with people? I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't know what it's going to turn into. And that's why I want these people to storm Area 51. Go ahead. Please do. Please do. There was a big, there was like a warning. Everybody's like, well, you know, that's a government enclave or uh, whatever the fuck government hub. And if you do it, there's, they have weaponry where they will fight you off. I'll get news for you. They don't just have guns. They got fucking alien technology weaponry. You know, when, when 800 hillbillies storm the gates and they get zapped with a fucking depancing laser, 
And then they all get fucking probed by some fucking crazy ass alien who runs out. You, d- you deserve it, you fucking hillbillies. All of you deserve to get a fucking ET finger all the way up your asses if you storm Area 51. That would be even better. You know what? Don't even fucking mow them down with bullets. Let them storm it and then let them never be seen again. That would be the fucking greatest thing of all time. Yeah, go ahead, guys. Don't even, when they storm it, just open the gate. Hey, you guys want to come in and look around? And just then fucking palmentary the shit out of them. Now you just can't leave. And have fucking four of those close encounters motherfuckers boogie out and just drag them into the shiny fucking lobby. And then they all get probed for the rest of their lives. You fucking crazy ass biscuit shirt eating hillbillies who want to storm Area 51 with your fucking AR-15s. Good. Good for you. Let them in. Just don't let them the fuck back out. How do we get rid of this asshole in the White House? I don't even fucking know. At this point, it's not even about voting. I I, I don't... We just... Now he's just... He's a... He's like a weird creature from another fucking dimension. Just from Narcissistator. Is that a planet? I don't don't know. Narcissistator? I'm trying to go with Jupiter. It didn't fucking work. (laughs) Fucking unreal, man. Fuck. I, I, we're not going to beat him by conventional means. You can't vote that guy out. He's never going to leave. We got to trick him. We got to trick him into saying his name backward. Or is there some way to just... Is there some frequency at which we can amplify Joe Strummer's voice to fucking send this guy back to where he came from? I don't I don't banish him to the 30s where he'd be more comfortable. I don't fucking know, man. I don't know. And it's all just this fucking cottage industry where everybody makes money off of it. That's the worst part. I gave money to two candidates. I won't lie to you. I gave money to Elizabeth Warren. I gave money to Bernie Sanders. It's one of the reasons I got to get back in the car. I gave them each $400,000. But my cushion was gone. <laughs> But even the people you support, I, 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 a day doesn't go by that I don't get five emails from Sanders and five emails from Warren. It's like, dudes, I, I gave you your 20 bucks. Go win. Do something. Make a speech. Come up with another fucking platform. They're like, hey, can we just get a couple more bucks out of you? Holy fuck. I didn't know you guys were going to be like homeless guys at the fucking overpass waiting for me to pull up and just constantly having a handout. Why don't you save the country and then I'll send you some more money? Right now, I just I, I, I liked what you had to say. I slipped you a couple of bucks for the effort. And now go win something. But instead, I just, I'm just i constantly besieged that they ask me for more money. And it's just, when you see that, because again, I want these people to win. I want them to succeed. I want to support them. But at the same fucking time, you just see the grift. Hey, we need more money. Hey, we need more money. Hey, we need more fucking money. We always need more money. Everybody needs more fucking money. And Elizabeth Warren's like, I'm taking small donations, so I'm not beholden to corporate uh, fucking overlords or whatever the fuck. Well, you're still going to be beholden to corporate overlords when you get into fucking office. I mean, I hope she's not. You know, you root for these people to be pure and you root for them to do the things that you want them to do. But it's like, like I support Cortez and I support Omar and I support Presley. I, I like, I, I like hope. I like thinking that there are young people who literally have society's betterment as their goal. I, I, and believe me, I, I'm sure you'll say I've been tricked by these women and they're charlatans and they're fools. Yes. If so, then I would rather be tricked by the women who are trying to save this place rather than trying to enrich their friends and ruin everything else. I have to hear all the time about how, oh, you know what? They're, they're now going to be the face of the election and they're going to be, it's going to be a referendum on socialism and all this shit. And I'm like, dude, at this point, what the fuck do we have to lose? I, I, but, but then again, like I said, I support these chicks. I support, and by calling them chicks, that's really supportive, but AOC, all, all of them. But then I have to see, they have a nickname now, the squad. Everybody's like, oh yeah, man, I'm down with the squad. Who's the squad? Oh, they're politicians that we voted for that we shouldn't be putting capes on or rooting for them. Like they're fucking Marvel or DC superheroes. They should just be doing legislation and getting things done. But again, everybody puts all of their fucking money in their, in their basket. And they think that they're going to save the goddamn earth. And it's like there you, you, you hope for too much. You wish for too much. And I, cause again, I'm completely cynical. Like, I don't think anybody's going to help anything. I think it's over. I think it's all going to fall apart, but I will do my best to support people who I think are going to fix it or attempt to fix it or care about fixing it. And I feel that those women do. I feel that Bernie Sanders does. Uh, I, and I, I, I don't want to 
be in a society of people who want to segregate and want to to punish people because of where they came from. You know, I I I, I look. I'm not Captain Immigrant. You know, I'm not that fucking guy. But at the same fucking time, if people are trying to escape a terrible fucking situation, and they're coming here where we are supposedly the land of the free and the home of the brave, and we have all of this money and we're the richest country on earth, then then why why can't we help them? And I'm not saying they got to help them at the expense because then there's something everybody what about it? What about all the homeless in the street? All right, we'll help them too. Oh, who's going to pay for it? I don't know. Why don't we cut the military budget by a third? Oh, that's insane. We can't do that. ICE wants us dead or who the the fuck? Uh, Al-Qaeda. See, I can't even, I can mix them all the fuck up. ICE and Al-Qaeda and fucking, I I don't, I don't know who's who anymore. I don't fucking care. It's insane to me to see people just turning it into a fucking softball game. Tastes great. Life's filling. I said it last week and it just got worse this week and it's just going to get worse every week. So I shouldn't pay attention. I shouldn't care. It's funny. I remember on Saturday Night Live that Robert Smigel cartoon, the ex-presidents, when they were heroes and they went in and they fought crime, he saw this coming because now it's happening in real fucking life. People are making the AOC and Presley and Illinois, the, the fucking squad. And, uh, and then I, you know, I have to watch like main, like Democrats like Schumer and Pelosi go after those women and tell them basically to know their place. And I, I don't understand what the fuck is happening. Shouldn't I, I keep reading. Everybody's like, well, don't you understand that they're trying to drag the party left? Yeah. Okay. It's a good idea. Because, I mean, trying to meet everybody in the fucking middle isn't working. Because then we meet them in the middle, they move everything, uh, the middle to the right. Then we meet them in the middle again, and they move it more to the right. And man, do I not want to fucking care. Do I not want to fucking care. I wish I could get to be Carlin, where you just kind of look at it with a jaundiced eye and laugh and root for the fucking comet. That'd be fucking cool as hell. I can't, I, and I don't, look, I don't have kids. I don't know why the fuck I can't just root for everybody to fucking go in a fucking flash of light. But that's just not in me. I can't find myself rooting for the end. I just, uh, I, is it just still the guy in me who wants to win, who thinks there's right and wrong at some point still? I don't know. I can't tell you, man. I can't. Everybody, this, and this stuff's happening. And then, and, and people, you know, you live your lives and that's fine. All, all this week, everybody's making themselves old in an app. And I think that's cute. Like you ever think we're going to get to be that old with the world way it is now? Sure. Good for you. I'm sure that's going to fucking happen. <laughs> you, do I, do you really think uh, some 20 year olds like, ah, look at me when I'm 80. It's like, really? You think there's 60 years left of this fucking planet? You know what? If, if, if you really wanted to be truthful on that face app and you wanted to make us all look old in 25 years, we'd, you'd just be a photo of an ashtray. Because fucking global warming is going to fry the fuck out of everybody and turn you into a cinder, man. And everybody trying to see what they look like old or as a baby. That's the, aha, look at me, I'm old. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I'm, a, I'm a baby. You know what, I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm going to keep a little more fucking suspense in my life, all right? All, all I hear is everybody bitching about Facebook using their data the wrong way or stores have a security breach and everybody loses their passwords. And unfortunately, everybody in the fucking world still sends their spit and fingernails to a company to find out if their uncle was a fucking duke or whatever. And everybody thought, oh, Facebook, oh my God, they're, they're infringing on us. Oh my God, they need all the, our passwords. Hey, what's that spit in an envelope and find out if my dad was a colonel? Yeah, let's do it, Zoom. Mail off your DNA to some fucking shady operation. You have any idea whether to trust them or not? And now you're uploading access to all of your photos to a company from Russia because they're going to give you a gray hair and you get to laugh for five seconds. Good for you. We deserve to be fucking swallowed up. <laughs> oh, man. All week, everybody. This is me old. Yay, look at me. We. And then you see the draconian fucking rules. Now, look. I'm just as guilty as everybody else. I got Facebook. I got Instagram. I got fucking WhatsApp and Snapchat and all that dumb shit on my phone. I've got fucking iTunes. Have I ever read the iTunes thing? No, I haven't. And the funny thing is now they're closing the iTunes store. So all the music that I bought from the iTunes store, will that disappear if they go to Apple Music? Can they just at any point, like, again, I didn't, I'm sure there's a clause in there that went, oh, by the way, all that shit you paid for, that's ours, man. You're just renting. You're renting this music, motherfucker. You don't own a thing. And FaceApp has this fucking thing where it says we can use all of your all of your photos. We can use and again, it's in legalese, but essentially they can use all of your photos because they have access to all of your photos. That's the thing. They don't you don't just give them the access to one photo and they turn you old. They get your whole photo library, and they have access to it. And they can use it in perpetuity. It says for ads. So essentially, you've turned your photos into Getty images. And they can use it for free. They don't have to rent your 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 look. It's it's. I, I, I think I told you on Funniest Pets are People, we had the greatest grift of all time. When I first heard it, I was like, this is genius, and I wish I'd thought of this scheme. The producer of Funniest Pets and People is a guy named Brad Lockman. And uh, he could not have been more professional or friendly or nice to me. I dug him. 
He's a guy, every year he produces the Macy's Day Parade. He's the executive producer of it. He was Bob Hope's right-hand man for a long time as a young man. And I, he learned at the foot of the master because here was a plan he came up with. He was working with Animal Planet and, and he had all of these clip shows. And at the end of the clip show, he'd be like, hey, is your dog wacky? Like, can your dog do a backflip? You should send us the clip and we'll send you a free t-shirt. We'll send you a dogs are wacky t-shirt. And everybody would be like, oh, that's awesome. And they would send him the clip. So he would get a free clip of a dog doing a backflip into a pool and you would get a t-shirt. We look at my shirt. This is awesome. And oh, by the way, I don't know if you know this. Uh, my dog Colby is going to be on TV. Yay. Well, the agreement you signed was when you gave him the clip and he gave you the t-shirt. He was buying the clip from you with that t-shirt. And you could never say that you ever had a claim to that clip again. And then he wound up accumulating the largest library of animal clips in the world. He has everything from fucking, I'm sure, cricket circuses to dogs on the moon to fucking cats and mice and rabbits, whatever the fuck. Any animal clip, he would be like, hey, send us the clip and we'll give you a free T-shirt for the price of whatever the fuck he paid for T-shirts. That guy's made probably 15 different television shows for markets all over the world and been paid for the privilege. For the price of shirts. These people, they sold out their dog's face and his future clip. And look, what are the people going to do with the clips? Of course, they're happy to see the dog on TV. They're happy to get a t-shirt. That's fun. But to have the wherewithal, the mindset to go, you know what? If I get a thousand motherfuckers to send me a clip for a shirt, I, I can make shows for the rest of my days and sell them to Animal Network or whoever the fuck. That's genius. And that's what the face app people are. They're fucking genius. They tricked everybody and not even tricked. People are happy to give away their information. Yeah, dude, let's do that. Oh, <laughs> look at me. I'm a grandpa. Yeah, you're a grandpa. And now you're going to be a grandpa in, in fucking Russia. And you're going to be a grandpa in Brazil. And you're going to be a grandpa selling yogurt in fucking Australia. And they'll never pay you a fucking dime because you wanted to laugh for five seconds. And look, I'm not telling you how to live your life. You want to do that? That's fine. And I have Facebook and it's worse. I know it. We can what about ism this all fucking day. But why make it easy for him? Why make it easy for him? And and it's it's with Twitter and and Instagram and social media, and I know that half my shows are me railing against them and me also participating in them fully, and I understand it's foolish. I know you can't live in this society now without participating in social media in some way. I mean you could. But then you're wearing a hoodie and coming up with a manifesto and your brother's going to turn you into the fucking FBI. I mean, it's just, it's now become an indelible part of our lives. You're on either Facebook or you're on Twitter or you're on, somehow you have email. Your electronic footprint is vast. Even if you have one email account. Well, you know, because uh, even if you have a fucking Hotmail account, which is now owned by Microsoft, which is now owned by these guys, which is owned by this dude. If you order anything from Amazon, then they have your information. I know. Information is cheap, man. And and if they bought you for a picture of yourself as a baby, then that's totally fine. But it just it just it makes me laugh to see it be made so easy. It's so easy for Trump to to turn the squad into the squad and make them the face of the election. You know, he was running on fumes forever. Still talking about Hillary, still saying lock her up, still saying we're going to go and get her email servers. Who and playing literally? He's like a band playing the greatest hits on the road. That's all he's fucking doing. He's tapping into the old material. He's like Billy Ray Cyrus. He's got one hit. He's got achy breaky heart. He goes out. He plays a fair. He yells lock her up. He yells about Obama. He yells about how he's doing more for black people than anybody else ever has. And he gets the fans to chant lock her up. And then he calls the media fake news and then he fucking leaves. That's it. That's his achy, breaky heart. And now the squad comes along and allows him to have Old Town Road. And he, and he gets to make the old material new again. He gets to drag out the one greatest hit and now he's got a fresh new single to throw out to the masses that for some reason inexplicably became a huge And, and there's nothing you can do about it. People love to hate the other. There's a Z in her last name. Send her back. She wears a hijab. Send her back. 
What a fucking mess. <laughs> it's a fucking mess. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to Canada in, in two weeks. I might stay. Anybody want to keep me in Canada? I'll throw this out to you guys. You guys want to keep me up there in fucking Toronto? I'm in. I'm willing to hear it now. Like I said, I want to go to Japan again and stay there. Maybe I'll go to Kuwait. I'll, I'll convince Ahmad to keep me there. Fuck this. You know what? Bottom line, hey, if you say no to me in Canada, you say no to me in Japan, you say no to me in Kuwait, there's always Ichthia. You guys can get me at Mike and Mike Schmidt comedy.com. You guys can be my friends at Facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can follow me at Twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can find me at Instagram and Snapchat. That's right. Instagram and Snapchat. What's that? Instagram and Snapchat. I'm Mike 40 YOB on there. Find me, please. Uh, <laughs> you can find me at Cancer Kids and Happy Dogs dot com. Uh, <laughs> I should buy that before somebody else does. Um, but I'm at all those places. Find me, follow me, friend me, be be a pal. That'd be cool. I'd love to have you on board. That'd be the best. Uh, our friend Ryan Dirks does all the web stuff for this show. He's the coolest. My friend Ryan Dirks. Constant. You can find him at Facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks. And, of course, David Hernandez is all of the uh, artwork and the music for this show. David Hernandez is the coolest. Find him and be his friend at Facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. And while you're there, go to his photos. And you can see all of the artwork he's done for this show, a lot of artwork he's done for his other Facebook page. Uh, because you want to hire him to do some stuff for you. You want to hire him to paint something for you, to paint you, to paint your friends, to paint your boss and give it to him for Boss's Day. Because don't you know we all celebrate Boss's Day. We get a day off, we all wake up, we think of our boss because he's the best. <laughs> uh, unless your boss is yourself. And then you're like, I hate that guy. <laughs> Go to facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. Look through all of his photos. And like I said, he's got a Facebook page called This Is Dumb, That's Dumb, You're Dumb, I'm Dumb. You can check that out and see all of the uh, artwork he's created there. He's made characters for that page. It's a kind of a meme-based uh, look at the world, as how dumb it is, Paige. You can go ahead and be a, And if you're going to join, he's going to ask you questions, and please answer the questions. Because if you don't answer the questions, he's not going to let you join. He's It's his group, man. He's a stickler. He's got rules. Every group got rules. And uh, Dave's it's his fiefdom over there, so he's going to make sure you answer those fucking questions, man. So please go to find the page on Facebook. This is dumb. That's dumb. You're dumb. I'm dumb. Uh, or go to his Facebook page, facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. Or you can go to his website, and see some of the corporate artwork that he's done in his past. Uh, you know, Valscapes, Guy Cons, all those things that are able to be perused, all of these places. But if you go to artbydmh.com, uh, you'll be able to see all of the work that he does there, all the stuff he's done in the past. And as I've said, you can hire him for something for your business. You can hire him for pleasure. You can hire him to do personal stuff. You can hire him to do stuff for your office, your, your whatever the fuck you need. The man's talented is what I'm telling you. He's got brushes, will travel, oils, acrylics, uh, linens. If you just tell him, hey, do me a favor, crush some beets with a mortar and pestle and paint with that because I want a beet painting of myself. I'll bet he can make that happen. I'm not even talking like a Ginsburg beet painting. I'm talking a painting made of fucking beets, baby. He'll probably take care of that for you. But the key is finding him. Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez or the Facebook page, This Is Dumb, That's Dumb, You're Dumb, I'm Dumb. Or go to his website, artbydmh.com. That's A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H.com. He's a real nowhere man Sitting in his nowhere land Making all his nowhere plans For nobody Doesn't have a point of view Knows not where he's going to Isn't he a bit like man, please listen, you don't know what you're missing, nowhere man, the world is at your command. What he wants to see Nowhere man can you see me at all Nowhere man Don't worry Take your 
time, don't hurry. Leave it all till somebody else lends you a hand. La 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 doesn't have a point of view. Knows not where he's going to. Isn't he a bit like you and me? Nowhere, man. Please listen. You don't know what you're missing. Nowhere, man. The world is at your command. La 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 la. He's a real nowhere man. Sitting in his nowhere land, making all. Making all his nowhere plans for nobody. Making all his nowhere plans for nobody. I am so fucking excited to climb out of my skull and climb out of my fucking apartment and go live life so I can talk to you guys about goddamn life again instead of climbing into a social media hole and getting caught in that fucking hamster wheel. And what the fuck, man? What's wrong with me? Yeah, I'm furious. Um, I'm furious at everything. You know that. I'm a furious guy. I'm furious styles. That's who the fuck I am. Uh, although I'd rather be Nino Brown. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, this, uh, you know, I thought I th- this show started strong and then I got, I got sucked into a hole again of just hating, not even hating, just fucking wondering what the fuck. Cause you know what? Do you find yourself just gobsmacked every fucking day? By, by the very fact that people, like I said, come crawling out of their racist caves and they're like, ha ha, we think you stink if you're black. Shut up, dude. What the fuck, man? But then, like I said, I saw a movie called Booksmart last week where like there was a black dude and he hung up with a, uh, an Asian dude and they hung up with a Mexican dude. And then there are two white girls and then there's a black teacher and nobody cared. It wasn't like a big deal. Everybody was just there. It was, it was you know what it was? It was a melting pot, ladies and gentlemen. It was a melting pot. It was a big ass fucking Mexican, Asian, black, white fondue. That's it was a Neapolitan fondue with every color of the goddamn rainbow. That's what it was. I don't. There's not a lot of uh, blacks in a rainbow. All right, you know what I meant. God damn it, just get off my back. Ah. <laughs> uh. You know, I'm debating whether even to release this fucking show, but I have to because I can't now because now I'm fucking dug in, man. There's no fucking way. I'm, I'm in here like a goddamn soldier in a, in a fucking trench. I'm just waiting for the first wave of the French to come and shoot me so I can blow them off the Maginot line. Is that real? Is that a thing that happened? Right. And we're not shooting the French. Wait, when am I in the bad guys team? Weren't the French on our side all the time? How did I jump the fence? <laughs> Wait, am I a sympathizer now? What the fuck happened to me? I thought everything was fine. I was all right. I mean, I'm dug in there at the Maginot line. I got the trench rolling. I got a bayonet. I got a weird hat that looks like a fucking spaghetti colander. And that's what happens, too, because we're dug in there, like I said, for hours and fucking hours. So me and the Italian soldiers, we make some pasta for everybody. That's right. I said we make some pasta for everybody. <laughs> I kiss on my fingers because we make the pasta for everybody in the goddamn trench. <laughs> oh, before the Germans get here, let's have some fusilli, comma, Jerry. Uh, Jerry was what we called all the Americans. That's how we handled it. The Italians, you know, you everybody's like the French guys were like, hey, what's up, Pierre? And then the Italian guys, you're like, hey, Luigi. And then the Americans were like, what's up, Jerry? And the Americans are just like, hey, man, my name's Rick. And it's like, well, that's more of a tough guy name. I'm going to call you Jerry. Fusili Jerry. That's who you're going to be. Jerry's getting angry. Actually, George is. But he's not there. Jerry is. Uh, all right, folks, here's the thing. The world's falling apart. We know this. And I'm bringing you a show that's ostensibly about my life, but my life has just been immersed in a pop culture blunder and watching pol- politics and everything else. Eat is fucking alive. My buddy Chip shows me a clip from the po- po- like World Series of Poker the other day. He's like, hey, check this out, man. And it's a guy like th- there's this new I don't even know if they're a new wave. They're just cunts. Everybody's a cunt. And these dudes are playing in the poker game and they uh, they come in swinging their dicks around like they're they're cool ass tough guy poker dudes. And they try to bully people off the, on the table. They like go all in on the first hand and they're just fucking trying to steal chips and they talk shit. And they wear sunglasses. And they stand up and they, they're like the they think they're the Conor McGregor's of poker. They're like the UFC poker idiots. And one of them stood up and he's yelling at the fucking dealer and he's yelling at the whole table. I'm going to fucking I'm going to, you know, I'm going to ask fuck all you guys. Blah, blah. And then he throws a shoe at the dealer. He takes his pants off. And finally that and then they step in. That was the thing. He was yelling and screaming for what seemed like three minutes. Then he throws the shoe at the dealer and still nobody's there. And then like a lady pit boss has to come over and go, all right, put your pants on, buddy. Dude, fuck that. 
World Series of Poker should just have armed guards. And if everybody gets up and acts the fool, just fucking put one between their eyes. That, just like the old tiny games. And it's still, you think in a saloon in the fucking 1800s? If you're sitting across from fucking Doc Holliday, and he's sweating like a motherfucker because he's so sick. He's a lunger. And you're there, and Johnny Ringo's at the table. And so's uh, uh, Powers Booth, whose name I, I character name I can't remember. And you're in a, and you're in a five-handed game of poker with those three dudes and, and just some local yokel, some hayseed. And the hayseed stands up. He starts berating the whole table. And then he goes all in and he tries to yell at like Doc Holliday. Everybody tries to get them to bet all their fucking uh, their steak right away. And then he throws a fucking boot at the dealer. And then he starts to take his pants off. Do you think that's when the Earps step in? Fuck no. The Earps blast that guy in the fucking head with the barrel of all their guns. Not only did the Earps burst in, I, I, I get a feeling that fucking Wild Bill Hickok comes back from the dead. All of those fucking dudes show up. Every legendary Western dude, the young guns come in. And they just fucking pile drive this fucking idiot. They bring Lou Diamond Phillips. They give the Indian a crack at the guy. Why the fuck not? You can't stand up and throw a boot and start yelling about fucking poker and, and, and showing your ass. Get the fuck out of my bar. Get the fuck out of the Lone Star, man. Go outside and eat dirt. You're going to eat a goddamn horse apple. That's what it is, right? A pile of shit's a horse apple? I think it is. Oh, it infuriates me, folks. I don't understand what's going on with this world. And I, and I will tell you this. Like, I'm old. I know I'm old. So then I wonder if I'm old man shouts at cloud, get off my lawn. What the fuck? Like, did I graduate into an uncle? Is that what I've become? Am I looking? Am I, am I the United States uncle where I'm just looking around and going, fuck, man, we weren't this crazy when I was kids. I mean, when I was a kid, I was a fucking idiot. I'm riding fucking shopping carts downhill, trying to crash through a fucking grocery store window. I mean, we're just being fucking dopes, put my head through a painting at a party. I'm not a good guy half the time when I'm young, but now I'm old. And I wonder to myself, is this, is this what I was? Did I look like this? But no. I wasn't throwing up a fucking Zig Heil salute and running my car into people at a goddamn protest. I wasn't doing that crazy shit. I wasn't wearing a mask and, and, and fighting people at, at, on the street in Orange County or whatever the fuck. Oh, wait, did I? No, I never wore a mask. <laughs> I fought people on the street in Orange County, but I never, I never wore a fucking mask. Maybe that's what I should have done. Maybe I do that route. Maybe I go, you know what? Maybe I go back into this. And that's another thing. Is everybody disingenuous, man? There was a fucking a, a, a thing a couple weeks ago in Portland. Like the Antifa was there and then it wasn't Antifa, but then there are other guys who were there. But then this one dude for three days is like, I'm going to go there. I hope Antifa doesn't fight me. I hate, you know, Antifa. They're scary. I hope they don't fight me. I really hope they don't bother me. I hope they don't do anything to me. And then he shows up and he starts asking shitty questions. So Antifa stomps a fucking hole in him and throws a milkshake in his face and he runs away and he's like, uh, my brain hurts. And then he starts to go fund me and he's got $180,000. See, that's what I got to do. Who can I antagonize folks? Can I antagonize the Nazis? Will they throw milkshakes at me? I don't know. <laughs> Tell me a protest I can show up. I don't, I don't even... Can we just make up a, like an Antifa for us? Like a Mike Tifa? Let's be Mike Tifa. Uh, Queen Mike Tifa. Let's be that. <laughs> let's get out there and fucking get it done. Um, I want $180,000 from a goddamn uh, GoFundMe because somebody poked me in the eye because I called him a Nazi. That'd be fucking great. Maybe that's what I do. Remember I talked about showing up at the Proud Boys thing where the Proud Boys are like, you took off your shirt. No, you took off your shirt. Nobody crossed this line. Fuck that. Just slap a guy in the face. It, it, it brings everything to a conclusion super quick because the, that noise either eat because you're, you're going to fucking you're going to fight or you're going to flee. That's what it fight or flight, motherfucker. Slap a guy in the face and watch how quick he decides. He either crumbles to the ground and you, and you just stare at him and go, what, dude? What? 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 Do they speak English and what? or he gets up and he wants to jam. And then you're like, all right, well, at least we expedited this and I can get home early. You know, nobody wants to wait until the wee hours for somebody to fucking th throw down and pull a move. Get you. Here's what I recommend. Get to the protest super early, get there as early as you can and walk right up. It's just like gin pop. You walk up to the biggest dude on the other side and you just fucking slap him in the face. And, and then you're going to go around and around. just set it off. Just be the one who sets it off. Everybody in this fucking, you know, everybody hearing me, everybody within earshot of me right now, be radio Raheem. Everybody here just be armed with a fucking garbage can and be ready to throw it through the fucking window at all times. None of this fucking simmering, there's a fuse, and oh my gosh, something might happen. Just set, get, set it off, man. Set it fucking off. Walk right up to the biggest dude, Gen Pop, Nazis, I don't give a fuck, and just slap him right in the fucking head. And then it's, and then it's on, man. And then it's like, then it's just a milkshake war. People are throwing shit and you're elbowing guys in the head and a guy jumps in the car and he tries to flee, but then he runs into some people and then the monuments are taken down and the Confederate flag is ripped in half. Next thing you know, the American flags are being burned and who the fuck knows? And please tell me more about the flag. Can we do that? Can we just, can we just tell me more about how we're supposed to love certain flags and hate certain flags and, and I, and, and how, how we're supposed to care about all about a flag? No, look, I, I get the Confederate flag thing. It's, it's a representative of a time. When, uh, you know, slavery ruled the world or roamed the earth, dinosaurs and slavery roamed the earth. However, the fuck I get it. So I, I understand that part of it. I don't, it doesn't mean anything to me. 
but I understand to some people it means something. Uh, and at the same time, here's the way I look at it, though. Again, for me, it doesn't mean anything about slavery. What it means to me is if you really look at it, um, those motherfuckers lost. They gave up. They surrendered. Why the fuck should their flag be anywhere? Why should anybody remember their fucking flag? That'd, that'd be like if, if last year everybody wore Los Angeles Rams Super Bowl champion T-shirts. Get the fuck out of here. You didn't fucking win anything. You lost. And you lost meekly and weakly to the goddamn Packers. And or to the Patriots, I should say. And because of that, nobody has slaves. That's right. I don't know if you know this because of last year's Super Bowl, slavery ended around the earth because there still was slavery. I get to hear that too all the time. Everybody's like, oh, slavery was a long time ago. We don't need to have any reparations. And oh, by the way, did you know that it was black people who started slavery? And then also there was, oh my God, shut the fuck up. You know, nobody gives a fuck about history in this country until they have to pull history out of their ass to try to tell you you're wrong. Excuse me, I don't know if you understand this, but these statues, these generals were fantastic, and they uh, may have worked for the Confederate Army, who lost. Well, then they, they weren't good generals, were they? No, you don't understand. They won several battles. Did they win the war? You, but you don't understand. Uh, they, they, they won several battles, and they invented uh, this, new, uh, this new method of surrendering, like with a you know, white flag, and they just bitched out. No, you why you shut up, please? And then uh, they get all furious at me. And these are the same people who tell you, if you don't win the championship, you're not nothing. You're not shit. If you're not Alabama, you don't win the fucking title game, then you're not, you, nobody else matters. If you're not Clemson, you don't win the title game, nobody else fucking matters. It's championship or bust. Well, I got news for you, motherfucker. The Confederate Army, bust. Absolute bust. Lost the Super Bowl. Fucking uh, uh, General Ulysses S. Grant spiked the football in your face. Your mutton-chopped face, Robert E. Lee. And by the time you loaded your musket, we had already moved into Atlanta and burned it the fuck down. I don't know if we burned it down after we signed that agreement. What about Appomattox? What about Gary Maddox? Let's talk about that. <laughs> Sorry, that made me laugh. Gary Maddox of the Philadelphia Phillies. Let's talk about him. Best defensive center fielder of his time. Took the mantle from Willie Mays and took the Mays from Willie Mantle, as a matter of fact, and took the Mickey from Willie Mays. <laughs> took, the, took the Willie from Mickey Mays and, and, and took the Mays from Willie Mantle. Holy fuck, I can't talk. This is what happens when you put the show out late, folks. Everything gets spinny. You end up fucking talking in circles and not know what the fuck to do and just wondering why the fuck this goddamn world is falling apart. And why do I even care? Why the, that's the thing. Why the fuck do I care? I don't have any kids. I just got me. Maybe, you know, maybe it's the ultimate in selfishness. Maybe I'm just like, hey, look, guys, yeah, maybe I do this. I call a meeting. I'm like, listen, I got 25 years left on this planet. What, I'm going to be 52 in, in a week and a half. All right. So I've, that's not even 25 years. I got 23 years left. Let's call it 23. I'll even spot you the fucking two. I got 23 years left on this planet. Can we just, can we all just stand the fuck down and calm down and let me enjoy, uh, you know, Tarantino movies and Batman and, and football games and hockey and my friends and poker and laughing just for a little while longer. Hot showers. Can we do that? Oh, can we bring back hot showers? Can I go ahead and put a... A, a shower head in my shower that doesn't spit on me. Can we do that, please? Can we just, for the next 23 years, all I'm all asking, it's all I'm asking. Just calm the fuck down. Don't, don't turn America into either a, uh, a war zone or a white supremacist haven pra- paradise. And I don't even know if the rest of the world is on board with that. Because, I mean, now we see everybody's like, well, you know, the far, far right is on the march in Britain and in Germany. And I'm just like, Jesus fucking Christ. This is just, it's not even about, it's just color at this point. We get we get colors who hate each other. We get colors. You know what? Let's get iced tea on the fucking case. Uh, <laughs> these colors will never die. Just multiply colors. Um, maybe, you know what? That's what we need. Maybe we need fucking uh, Sean Penn. And uh, I'm going to guess Ed Harris off the top of my head, if I remember correctly, who the cop was with, with him in colors. Is it Ed Harris? I think so. I just saw Ed Harris in the trailer for uh, fucking new Top Gun. Uh, it's called Topper Gun. I don't know if you know this. And, uh, and Tom Cruise, his co-pilot is a ghost. I don't know if you know that. Um, that is that is the epitome of an old-time grandpa o- uncle joke. Nobody gets that fucking joke. Or not, it's not even a joke. Nobody gets that reference, I should say. That's the problem. See, jokes have become references. References have become jokes. We've turned this fucking world upside down. Ed Harris is in the trailer for Top Gun, which, by the way, I, I didn't care about Top Gun. I didn't. I just, so what? Uh, I've seen it. Only because Cruz is in it, and because Cruz is a fucking maniac, and I love him. Uh, and and I just saw the trailer for the new one, and uh, I'm fully invested. I'm completely on board. I'm too messant thinking about fucking Top Gun Two or whatever the fuck they're calling it. Like I said, Topper Gun, and and soon to be followed by Toppest Gun. Uh, well, you know what? What do they call Toppest Gun? Why don't you have a plane that you're flying super fast and you're eating tiny little quiches? Let's have Toppest Gun. Um, I'm on board with fucking Top Gun Two. Okay. Get off my ass. And then I see Ed Harris in it. Is Tom Skerritt dead? 
I don't know if Scarrett's still around. Like Scarrett might have turned it down because he I, didn't he become like a I hate war and I'm mad I made that movie guy. I think he did. Um, but I, I'd pay to see Scarrett in that fucking movie. Why not bring them all back? Bring Anthony Edwards back. Bring the whole crew. Kelly McGillis. Although she'd probably be a she's she's all the way out now, right? Isn't Kelly McGillis? She completely jumped the fence and she, she might be living her life as a dude. I'm not sure what Kelly McGillis did, but she. Uh, you know, she was in Top Gun and pretending to be like she was in love. And then it turned out she might have been on the other side of the fence the whole time. But then again, we hear that about Cruz, but I don't give a fuck about either of them. Go ahead. Go down on who you want to go down on. That's my that's my motto from now on. If you want to go down on somebody, go down on them. Doesn't matter. Uh, if you're Cruz, if you, if you want, if you got to have a, a cock buffet, that's fine. If you're Kelly McGillis and you want to just fucking dive into some gash, do it. I don't care. I'll still pay to watch your movies. You're a terrific actor. I can I can separate the artist from their lifestyle, and I don't have a problem with their lifestyle. I'm just saying it's like you know because people are always like, oh, if they shove it in our goddamn face, no, I please shove it in my face. I wish Kelly McGillis would shove her fucking lifestyle in my face. And honestly, I'd watch Tom Cruise go down on somebody. I'm on board with that too. Shove that in my face. You know what? Why don't you shove my face in it? How about that? Either these people, Polly, Polly want a Schmitty? Who the fuck wants me involved? Step aside, spread your legs, and I'll just dive right the fuck in. I don't care. Me and Cruise will fucking uh, we'll share a box lunch or a fucking. Uh, it's probably not. A, I'm probably sure that Kelly McGillis actually <laughs> will share a box lunch. She's not going to want me on board. She's a lady. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She's a lady talking about Kelly McGillis. And that lady is fine. I know the word's mine, but she's not mine. I didn't want to make her have a relationship with a man if she didn't want to. Because again, like we said, she jumped the fence and she's having a box lunch. I'm excited for Top Gun 2, but I see Ed Harris. That makes me even more excited. You know why? Because these guys are fucking treasures. These guys are awesome. Whenever you see like Robert Redford or Ed Harris, I I wish I could see a Nicholson pop up in a movie. I would go out of my fucking mind. I would do a goddamn somersault. The fact Pacino's in the new Tarantino movie, we got to preserve these fucking dudes. We got to just shoot them up with whatever fucking horse tranquilizers, keep them alive for the next 25 years because those are fucking great actors and I love to watch them. Is there anything better than seeing Robert De Niro do that Robert Mueller on Saturday Night Live? Oh, does that that not just show you uh, how unbelievably easy it is to talk Robert De Niro into doing anything these days. <laughs> Holy shit. Is that awful? I, I mean, look, I don't want Saturday Night Live. It's not my thing anymore. Uh, I don't find it funny or amusing. I'll catch up over the weekend. If something goes viral and everybody's like, you gotta see this man. Like I thought when Kate McKinnon did the it parody as, uh, as Kelly Ann Conway, that was fucking perfect. I dug that. That was fun. Certain things are funny when hater was on like fucking haters, just a genius Mulaney. When he was on, those were genius. That fucking lobster sketch is fucking awesome. But uh, most of and Ke- and and Keenan Keenan Thompson right now Kel Kel's not on there Kel's no good you know where Kel is right now he's at the Good Burger can you take your order please uh welcome to Good Burger home of the Good Burger can I take your order um hi I saw a show once and I remember the word sir but what a dick uh what was I talking about fucking Kelly McGillis box lunch cruise buffet of cock um. Oh, yeah, Ed Harris, fuck, I'd love to see those guys in a movie. That's fine with me. And also, you hear his voice and you go, I think I know who that fucking dude is. Who is it? It's like Gene Hackman. You hear his voice and be like, fuck, show me, show me him. But then, they, of course, they reveal Ed Harris and he looks like one of the California Raisins. I mean, that, that fucking dude has seen, he's lived a life. And that's fine. Uh, my, favorite thing, my favorite thing Ed Harris ever did was when they gave away, who did they give a fucking Oscar to who is a collaborator? Like, he, he was a guy who, he gave up people to Joe McCarthy. I forget who the fuck it was. It was like, uh... Not Zero Mostel. It was one of those fucking guys. Some old school. Lainey Kazan, maybe. I don't know. Some fucking old school uh, director guy. Or Elia Kazan. Not Lainey. Lainey's the, the chick, right? So Elia gives He gave up. He was a collaborator with the McCarthy. And he gave up a bunch of his friends. And so they show everybody give him a standing ovation. And they cut to fucking uh, Amy Madigan and and Ed Harris just sitting. Not, not just sitting there to, to make a point, like to not join the standing, standing ovation, but literally seething, like looking at this dude, like if they could take the stage, they would have fucking clotheslined him. And I'm like, good for you. I'm on board with that. Why are you, who's kissing ass here? Stand by your fucking convictions. And if your convictions are that this guy was a fucking weasel collaborator who sold out his friends, who gives a fuck what kind of pictures he made? Fuck that guy. And, uh, and, and look, I recognize that everybody else can stand up and go, we, we love Kazan and maybe we would have collaborated too. And it was a hard time and Joe McCarthy and then have you at, la- at long last have you no decency, sir. And Roy Cohn and all that other bullshit. And who knows? It was a weird time, man. And everybody will answer. Everybody will be called. Everybody will have to heed. But Ed Harris won't. Abby maybe Madigan won't. They, for- they forgive nothing. Nothing at all. So, uh, so I'm an Ed Harris guy. I'm on board with him, man. And then I saw him in this trailer. And again, like I said, it's, you hear the voice and the voice is unmistakable. You're like, holy fuck. And then you see him and you go, Oh, please give him an, a, a youth serum. Please save Ed Harris because he's great. and We can't lose him. 
Um, you you just it's you don't want the, that's like Meryl Streep. But Meryl Streep doesn't look as bad as Ed Harris. She's just, but Meryl Streep's getting older, and eventually, she's gonna. And I don't I don't want to say this, like because here's the thing. We might lose Meryl Streep, like, you know, she might die of old age or whatever the fuck, or maybe she'll just retire from acting and go be a fucking, uh, uh, what's that word I'm looking for, a uh, charitable person. I don't know what the fuck I'm thinking of. An ambassador. There you go. She might be an ambassador for the arts, or maybe she'll be an ambassador to some small country and she'll save them because she's a fucking genius. Who knows? But, but, at the same time, uh, she she might get, like, Alzheimer's. Because we always hear these rumors that Nicholson's got Alzheimer's, and that's one of the reasons he doesn't make movies anymore. But he still goes to the Laker games and shit. And you know what I hate is like, you know, Nicholson, he got fat. There's no doubt about it. So he shows up at these games, kind of unkempt, kind of funky looking. He's kind of a big dude, but he'll still wear like the orange tinted shades and stuff. He's still fucking Nicholson. But yeah, he's he's enjoying himself, I guess you would say. I don't know if he's just if he's if he's full of booze, drugs or pussy, whatever the fuck he got fat on. He got fat on it could have been just rich food. Who the fuck knows? But that fucking dude made five easy pieces. That dude made fucking one flew over the cuckoo's nest. That dude's a fucking genius. If he wanted to get fat, he can get fat. I mean, he, 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 at least he's not Brando. Brando got fat in the middle of it. Brando is a guy, everybody's like, ah, oh, we fucking love Brando. And then it's like, whoa, hey, hey fucking Marlin, you want to put the popsicles away, buddy? Um, but he just kept ingesting them, eating sticks of butter right out of fucking that chick's ass, that Indian chick's ass, whatever the fuck. No, the Indian chick's accepted the Oscar. Uh, the, the, who's the chick from uh, uh, Last Tango? I want to say Maria Menounos, but I know that's totally wrong. Hi, welcome to the 40-Year-Old Boy podcast where we can't remember anything anymore because we're ancient and old. And what the fuck happened to us? Um, all right, so I don't even know. Why am I, why, why am I doing another show? I just did a fucking show. You know why? Because I hate at the beginning of the show. I mean, I liked, I liked the first, you know, I'm funny for like the first half hour, I think. And then I just, I just wind up in a fucking fog. As I'm talking about Storm in Area 51 with a bunch of goddamn idiots who are just going to go in there and, and hopefully get murdered by alien technology. Just let them in. Just let them in the fucking door. Don't even let them storm it. Just let them in and you'll never fucking see them again. And if people are like, because again, you're the government. You can do that shit. They make people disappear on the reg fucking right now. All of a sudden some guy, hey, anybody seen Luis? No, we have not. There was a van here earlier. Maybe he got taken. I'm, I don't know about all that. Uh, but Luis is gone. You'll never fucking see him again. How about those fucking dudes over in, in Iraq or whatever the fuck? Guys on the street, I see it all the time. And that fucking, what's that show with Mandy Patinkin and the other chick? Not that Mandy Patinkin's a chick, but I mean, uh, uh, Homeland, right? Who's that girl? She's from Shop Girl. Claire Dunes, Claire Delane, Claire Deloon. No, Claire Danes. There you go. Wow, this is this is a fucking chore. This, you know what? This last whole fucking I, half hour I've been talking. This could be like a, a brain scan where everybody goes, "Yeah, no, dude, you've lost it. Seriously, hang it up. It's over. It's fucking over for you. You're trying to wing shit off the top of your goddamn head, and it's not happening because you can't remember any fucking names. What about that girl? What about the, who, who? Marlo Thomas? Ha! Ah, see, I remember that. Uh, that girl. That girl. That girl. Doo doo. Donald. I just did a that girl reference. Holy Christ. Roll me up in a carpet and throw me in a dumpster. Put two in the back of my head. Derringer style. So they fucking ping pong around my fucking skull. Don't blow my head out. No, make me feel it. Put one, you know, put one in the base of my neck so I'm paralyzed and I can't move. And then spend a half hour telling me about the next one you're going to put in my brain as I sit there in pain, unable to squirm away from you. And then just put one right in my fucking brain pan. And it rattles around in there and just fucking takes and just carves out a fucking ant farm inside of my fucking gray matter. <sighs> Who wants to drive for Uber and Lyft? You? Of course you do. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Uh, I do, and I love it. Uh, make sure they get your color of your car done first, or you'll have to call up and talk to some guy from from fucking Afghanistan or whatever the fuck. Um, if you drive, uh, if you want to drive for Lyft, you can use my code Mike seven two zero zero five seven. That's uh, all caps M I K E seven two zero zero five seven. Mike seven two double zero five seven. Use that if you want to be a driver for Lyft, and use that if you want to be a passenger in a car that Lyft owns. I, I think my throat made a noise. I apologize. Um, and if you're a first-time rider on Lyft, you can go ahead and use that code, code code. Use that code, dude. Or use that code, dude. Uh, that's Mike. 720057. I get a spiff. Think of me. Think of me. That's a little Todd Rundgren for you. Um, we gotta get you a woman. Todd is God, right? Can we just agree on that? Um, hello, it's me. All right, I'm just going to sing Todd Rundgren songs the rest of the way. What did I, uh, oh, dude, how about Why Can't We Be Friends? How devastating is that song? Oh, Jesus. We 
can't play this game any longer. Can we still be friends? God, I can't sing. I wish I could sing. If I could sing, this show, this show would be so different. Oh, well, I mean, it wouldn't be different in that there would be more singing because there couldn't possibly be more singing in this fucking show. But there would be better singing. If I could sing, I would sing all the time. You ever see Eliza Skinner? I just, I, I met her once and then I've just, I've just seen her from afar, you know, and, I, and she's so funny and I follow her on Twitter and Instagram and she's so funny and so talented and she can sing. She invented this, whenever she goes into a hotel room, has got two beds. She had, she wrote a song called an eating bed and a sleeping bed and she'll sing it in the room and it just, it's stuck in my brain. It's because she's so goddamn talented. It's amazing. And then she, um, she just released a video uh, five months ago. I don't know. Google it. You can Google it. Eliza Skinner wrote, she did a song and she actually did like an old school kind of eighties video where she's looking all kind of vampy, sexy, but it's a silly song. It's really fun. So go check out Eliza Skinner who has nothing to do with this podcast and probably wouldn't remember meeting me at all. But so what? I'll plug her. She's fucking amazing. Uh, and she can sing. So if I had her on the show, she'd sing like, I wouldn't even talk. I would just let Eliza Skinner. I, then, you know, I talk about how I just don't have a script and I just fucking wing it. Oh, dude, how great would it be to just have fucking Eliza Skinner just get, pop in here and sing the code? <laughs> the bike 720057 for Lyft. Oh, see, wonder what, she, wonder what her going rate would be. wonder what she would charge me for that. Uh, first of all, I would have to get her to answer an email or a direct message, and that would be fucking like a minefield. Because, I mean, anytime a performer is a woman and is crazy talented and acquires a large social media following, I just imagine... They, they are just having to careen through a forest of dicks every morning coming into their fucking Instagram or their Twitter and their DMs and all that shit. Guys just sliding in and going, you know, I like your singing. Hey, I can sing too. Of course, because they turn around to what they can do. Um, I took, I, I shot a shot with, uh, I think I talked about it on the, did I talk about it on here? I don't know if I did. It wasn't a shot. I mean, I was genuinely trying to be a nice person, but I'm sure it came off like a shot. So I tried to make it like it wasn't a shot. And also I've never seen Hamilton. So I please forgive me for cribbing the language. Is that how it's used? The shooting the shot. Um, but I, I text, I not text, I texted, I tweet, I tweeted somebody and then I, I wrote them a direct message and, uh, and they were very nice to me. And, uh, and it, it makes me cause I, and then I wanted to write her and go, I look, I'm I, cause, but then again, this is a step too far and this is just how fucking weird I am. I wanted to say, Hey, you're very nice to say that. Thank you. But you, you really don't have to be this nice to me because I know, cause you don't know me and you think I might snap. Like I, I picture every interaction a woman has the man online has to be where she's like, Oh man, you're really sweet, but no, thank you. You know, like they have to pretend that they, I mean, and look, she's, she seems like a nice person. She wouldn't just tell me to fuck off and leap into the ocean. But at the same time, she was very sweet to me in a way where I almost felt bad that I was bothering her, where I wanted to go, oh, oh no, you, you, we don't, you don't know me and you really don't have to be this gentle or nice with me, I promise. Uh, I got it. I, that's, that's totally cool. But, but again, you never know who out there is a fucking Unabomber. You don't know who the fuck is out there. You, you, know, you ever see those, like those incel idiots who fucking record themselves and they're like, oh, women are bitches, man. And they, 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 who was the idiot who killed everybody up north? He fucking, he became the incel god. He's the dude who pay, taped himself in his car. I don't remember his fucking name. Thank God, right? I don't want to remember anybody's fucking name. It's bad enough I know who Dylan Roof is. Fuck that, dude. I don't want to know that fucking guy's name. Um, so, hey, use my code. I get before <laughs> I spun off the fucking planet. Use my code for Lyft. Use my code for Uber. My, my Uber code is all lowercase. D-J-Z-W-1-Y-T-T-U-E. That's D-J-Z-W-1-Y-T-T-U-E. Go ahead and use that, please. And, uh, and, and uh, become an Uber driver. Or an Uber passenger. Or a Lyft driver. Or a Lyft passenger. Either way, keep me in your thoughts and use me when you use me. Use me, baby. All right, that's a song. Um, <laughs> uh, we have a sponsor. Did you know we have a sponsor for this show? Although he, after this week, he might, this might be the last one he ever sponsors. He actually sent me a text. He was very nice. Uh, I got a text from Jesuit today to see if I was okay because the show didn't come out. People, are, when, I, when I hide, man, I fucking I hide. So people will write me a text. And then I feel, all right, I'll explain this. And you don't, you, I'm sure you know it already because you know me and you've listened for a long time. I don't, uh, if I don't get the show, if I don't get my work done on time, if I don't get the show done on time, then I'm mad at myself. And then I allow myself to be angry at myself and keep myself from doing the show. Does that make sense? Like in my head, I get that thing where I go, ah, fuck, you got to do that, dude. And then it becomes this monolithic thing. And then I'm like, well, Fuck, you know, I, you know, you didn't do it. So, I mean, I mean, maybe people don't care. Maybe you shouldn't do it. Maybe you shouldn't just do it this week. I mean, it's just this thing where I'll talk myself out of it, but then I'll be, then I'm ashamed that I didn't get out in time. So I'm like, oh man, you should have fucking got it out. Now it's really not out in time. So now nobody even fucking cares. If you put it out, nobody's even gonna fucking listen to it. So why would you even bother doing something like that? It's, it is a fucking battlefield in my skull. 
uh, just like love, as Pat Benatar taught us. But I'll tell you what, inside my fucking head, it is just it is just a back and fucking forth rock fight, and I am losing, man. Uh, <laughs> so people have reached out. My buddy Murph sent me a text, which was very nice, and I actually told Murph, I'm like, hey, show's almost done. It's gonna go up. This is like 40 hours ago. Um, and fucking, and, and Jesuit was also very nice to me. And, and this might be too honest. I'm sure you don't want to fucking hear me say this because like, I, I, I have, uh, I get some very strong advice from a friend of mine and he's just like, Hey, quit telling people that you, you, you're a fucking maniac or quit telling people that you'd, you, you know, you're, you're going to put up a rerun. You're going quit telling people you're going to do that shit. And I'm like, yeah, I, I know I get it. I get it. But sometimes I just got to vomit out what the fuck's in my brain. And by sometimes, I mean, every goddamn time. And also, like I said, but you don't step out of your house and do anything. You end up talking about the shit that's fucking echoing around in your goddamn haunted mansion brain with the voice of the guy who was fucking uh, Tony the Tiger or no, uh, Grinch, uh, the Thurl Ravenscroft, that guy, he sang the Grinch song, but he wasn't, was he also Tony the Tiger? I think he was the, their great guy. He's also the voice of the haunted mansion in Disneyland. And he was the voice of uh, you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. Let me ask you this. Are you cuddly as a cactus? Are you as charming as an eel? Then you may be Mr. Grinch. Uh, <laughs> why Mr. Very formal. You may be the Grinch, the Grinch, not the Grinch, not a Grinch. Can't be a Grinch. There aren't multiple Grinches. Not like there are multiple Frankensteins and multiple Draculas. Uh, there's plenty of Draculas out there. Oh, I know this. There's, there's no, no. Look, until you show me a coffin with a mailbox that says Dracula on it, I'm not going to believe he's one guy. There's a billion Draculas out there. Again, I saw Lost Boys. Keeper Sutherland wakes up. He's got fucking fangs. He's a goddamn lost boy fucking uh, uh, Dracula. He's got four Draculas with him, all with fucking crazy hair. Bill and or Ted are both Draculas in that movie. Um, so I have a sponsor. Have I mentioned this? A wonderful person. Our good friend, Fearful Jesuit. He uh, has a podcast called The Paranoid Strain, which you can go right now and get in the iTunes store. The current episode is an amazing episode. It's a tour de force about the JFK assassination. Go ahead and download that. And I, he wrote me what he's working on for his future episodes, and I don't get it. Like I, It's one of those things where like someone, hey, man, here's what quantum physics looks like. And I'd be like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? Uh, no clue. So he starts relating to me what he's going on. It's some theory about reality and a bunch of other stuff. I can't, I don't want to give it away, but he's going to work on it. It's going to be fucking amazing. If I tried to bring it to you, you'd just be like, what is this pile of fucking shit pudding you just gave us? Uh, oh my God, by the way, do not order the shit pudding. It is terrible. I, and look, I don't even like pudding anyway, but you think if you're going to order pudding, you would order something you like. I don't mind. I don't mind a rice pudding. I actually, I checked that. I, you know what? I go off the grid. I fucking love rice pudding. I love it because it's got little crunchies in it. Even though they're not crunchy, they're soft, but there's texture. That's the thing I don't like about pudding. It's just got, it's just that fucking smooth. It's just, you know what, you know what pu- chocolate pudding is? You know what pudding is, period? It's just pus. But they flavor it with sugar and chocolate. It's just chocolate pus. That's all pudding is. That's why if you, if you were like, hey man, you want a chocolate cream pie? Fuck you. Put fruit in my pie so I got something to bite. I need to bite something, baby. Don't fucking just give me a pie that I can eat with a straw. Fuck that fucking slurping up a goddamn pie. Now, I'll tell you this. If you say to me, hey, Mike, you want a French silk pie? You're goddamn right I want a French silk pie. That's not your run-of-the-mill chocolate cream. That's not your run-of-the-mill banana cream. That's not the run-of-your-mill uh, cream-filled cream. That's a fucking French silk, and that's all you need, baby. That's You know what? You get a French silk pie home, you eat half, and then you just run your hand through the rest of it, and you jerk off with it. That's what you do. You just get a handful of French silk filling, and you put your pinky in the air, and you jerk off like a Rothschild. That's how you fucking handle your business, baby. You just fucking dive in, you find, and you eat, you eat half the pie first, no doubt. Go ahead and cut it right down the middle, and you eat, two, they eat half a pie, and you're like, because uh, now you're just a fucking... Now you're an aristocrat. Now you're just the richest, fattest fucking monster in the world. Now you're Henry the goddamn eighth, ninth, and fucking tenth. You're going to cut off Anne Boleyn's head. You're going to fuck the hole. You're going to sit down. You're going to be filled with pie. And then you're going to take the other half and just literally scoop out all the filling in your hand and just fucking all over your crotch and jerk off with it. Just fucking unload, baby, because that's living. That's how the rich do it. Remember I talked earlier about fucking cancer kids and happy dogs and buying a ranch for them? I got to have part of this budget for French silk pie jerk offs. I absolutely need to go ahead and fucking throw that on the goddamn list. You know what? Cancer kids and happy dogs and all of my friends and family come in first. But somewhere on that list of top 20 things to do is get a French silk pie, eat half, and then jerk off at the other half. Because I want to see how those rich people live, baby. You know, that's something I would do if there was a Baker Square in town here. I could do that for myself. But no, I moved far away because they're in the Midwest. They're not here on the West Coast because they figured, you know what? Rich people on the West Coast don't want to jerk off with our pies. I'm here to speak for the rich people of the West Coast, even not being a rich person. As an uh, aspiring rich person, I can't wait to jerk off with half your pie. Sell them out here immediately.
And don't tell me you can get it frozen at the goddamn fucking grocery store because that's not what a rich person would do. A rich person would just go in. He, uh, you know, and and look, let's be honest. A rich person is going to jerk off with any pie you give them. There's a, there's some right now. There's some rich person right now who is gagging four and twenty blackbirds with his cock one at a time, and that's not a fucking pretty picture at all. He's fucking letting them have it. Just they're like they're doing the, and he's just like jam. Here you go, fucking cock right down your fucking sparrow gullet. Suck on that four and twenty. And then that fucking is terrible. You got dead birds all over, but you say you satiate yourself because that's the rich do. They use tiny animals to jerk off with. They defang a snake and they just fuck its mouth. That's what they do. They just fucking throw it on there like a goddamn fancy ass cowboy boot condom. They're just like throwing a rattlesnake on there because then they're just fucking jerking off with a rattlesnake corpse. And then you just hear the fucking rattle go. And then you fucking unload right inside that goddamn snake. You just throw it off right to the trash right there next to the half a pie tin that you just fucked up to. God damn, the rich are decadent monsters. How dare you? See, we've got to eat the rich, folks. They're defanging snakes and fucking them and using them as condoms so they can have a fancy cowboy boot condom. They're fucking eating half a pie and then scooping out the rest of the pie to jerk off with, gagging four and 20 blackbirds with their cock. I don't care for this kind of behavior. So our sponsor is the good friend, Fearful Jesuit. It's the Paranoid Strain Podcast, available now in the iTunes store. Go ahead and download it. Go ahead and subscribe, please. First of all, leave a review in the iTunes. Well, first of all, listen to it so you know it's good. Uh, you, you, you can't go just on my word, although you could probably. But go ahead and leave word in the iTunes store. Go ahead and throw it in there and just go, hey, look, I love this podcast. Mike Schmidt told me that I should listen to it, and he was correct. Because that lets Jesuit know I'm a hitter. It lets the iTunes store know that Jesuit's a hitter. Everything's fucking perfect. It's a circle jerk for all three of us. Uh, and that makes me happy. God knows I wanted to circle jerk off with fearful Jesuit and a stranger. So please listen to the podcast, download it, subscribe and listen. And if you haven't listened to the catalog yet, go ahead and listen to the back catalog. It's, it's phenomenal stuff. Just really, like I said, nutrition, not nutrition, informationally dense. Why do I keep saying nutritionally dense, informationally dense? That's what I call it. Uh, and it's great stuff, period. It's just really good work. So please download the paranoid. And also you can write our friend Jesuit and give him a note and tell him we told you uh, to do so. The paranoid strain at gmail.com. The paranoid strain at gmail.com. Write him a note. Tell him you got, uh, you love the podcast. You heard it via us and uh, he'll be happy and I'll be happy. It'll be fantastic for everybody involved. Please do that. Thank you. Hey, I'm on cameo. That means I'll call you. I don't know if you want me to call you. I, I, I don't blame you if you don't want me to. If you want me to call you and apologize for this week's show, go ahead and let me know, but you got to book me on cameo to do it. That's a $15 apology, but I'm happy to fucking make it happen. Uh, go ahead and book me on Cameo. You download it to your phone. It's the Cameo app. Who, who did I just see is on there now? Lenny Dykstra. I'm, a, I'm on the same platform as a Lenny Dykstra, ladies and gentlemen. If you, if you want nails to talk about eating your mom's pussy, then you can go ahead and book him. But I'll tell you what, I'm a lot cheaper and I'll talk about eating your mom's pussy. Go ahead and hire me. Certainly, I didn't hit a home run in the 1993 World Series and I wish I had, but if I had the chance, I'll bet I could have. However, I was doing stand-up comedy uh, in in Orland Park, Illinois in 1993 during the World Series, and I got to watch the Phillies lose to Mitch, uh, well, Mitch Williams lost to fucking Joe Carter. I watched the Joe Carter home run in a green room at K.J. Riddles, and I'll never forget it. Uh, well, you know what? Do me a favor. Book Lenny Dykstra for a cameo and have him talk about me and K.J. Riddles the night they fucked up and lost the World Series. Although Lenny didn't fuck up. He was fucking nails that year. He was money that goddamn year. And now he's just turned into a fucking idiot. What a weird life. Goddamn superstar baseball player, then pretends to be like a billionaire, owns car washes. Then it turns out he's lying about everything. Now he lives in a fucking guest house, and now he's just coasting on being famous. He's on Howard Stern talking about eating pussy and being a fucking monster. He says he's a gigolo. He hires himself out for sex. What a fucking weird dude. But you know what? It doesn't matter because now we're at that time in this fucking planet's existence where if you're a weird dude, you're going to win. It doesn't. If you're a fucking weird dude, you're going to get booked. You're gonna, everybody's going to you're going to get some cult of personality because that's the thing. It, it, like nails could be on fucking. He could say some shit about fucking a girl in the ass or whatever on, on Twitter. And women will be like, dude, you're kind of a monster here, right? You know, this woman's married and you shouldn't say that. And then all these bros will swoop in and go fucking nails, fucking 93 Phillies, goddamn 86 Mets. Fuck you, bitch. And uh, you can have your cult of personality and you can make it work for you. And, and, uh, and that's my goal. I want, like I said, I want to get big enough to fucking jerk off with pies and have a cult of personality who tells everybody to fuck off. And they're mean to me on Twitter, by the way, nobody is ever mean to me on Twitter. I get like one person a month who writes a shitty thing to me on Twitter because of some political thing that I retweeted or I made fun of. My favorite is when I retweet somebody and then they, and they write uh, like a, an idiot writes me some MAGA dope writes me like I fucking created it. I'm like, do you not know how this website works? You fucking weird bot. You fucking red hat wearing goddamn robot. You fucking deputy dog, motherfucker. Jesus Christ. Take you with an accent as thick as your skull. Get the fuck out of my timeline. You fucking hump. Well, you lost. Take the flag off your car, you dick. <sighs> All right. 
So here's the deal, folks. Uh, subscribe to Paranoid Strain. Book me for Cameo. Become an Uber and Lyft driver. Uh, did I tell you about the YouTube channel? We have a YouTube channel. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to that, please, because it's got all the backloads of the podcasts on there. And subscribe to our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy. I'm streaming on there all the time. Right now we're in the middle of a scary game called The Evil Within. And uh, a good friend of mine named Adam, who is who is doing everything he can to help me, and it makes me incredibly happy, as uh, plotting, uh, well, he came up with a great idea, and I'm I'm gonna I gotta contact him and follow through on it. But I think I'm gonna have a schedule for the rest of the year regarding tweeting or not tweeting, fucking uh, Twitch. So so it all depends. I gotta sit down with him and figure out what he wants to do. But I loved the ideas that he came up with, and uh, but he's another guy that I I haven't answered in the last two days because I've been sitting here staring at the fucking wall, going, well, you know, if you do the fuck, shut up, nobody fucking cares. Jesus Christ. Um. So yeah. So what? Where are we at? Oh, YouTube. Yeah, go to youtube.com slash the 40-year-old boy. Get my, subscribe to that channel, twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy. Subscribe to that. Pop into the stream. You can follow and subscribe to the channel. That'd be great. Uh, you could, If you're an Amazon Prime customer, and I'll get to them in a second, but if you're an Amazon Prime customer, you can use that to become a Twitch Prime subscriber to my uh, Twitch channel, and it gets me five bucks. It costs you nothing. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Uh, so please do that, if you would. And as I'm mentioning Amazon, well, if you go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com, you go to the merchandise page, which is the Joe Business page, click on the Amazon link that's there lurking, and uh, and you can go ahead and use our Amazon link and give us some money. That'd be fucking cool. Prime Day was this week. I hope you're able to use it on Monday. And then the link exists. So you can go in there and go ahead and shop to your heart's content. And as long as you're using the link, I'm happy because we get money, they get money, you get stuff. That's the way it works out. You were going to shop at Amazon anyway. You were going to buy some kibble for the dog. You were going to buy a hat for yourself. You're going to get a tricycle for the boy. You're going to get a hose for your husband. Why wouldn't you do something like that? So go ahead and use our Amazon link to go ahead and give us credit for all of that goddamn stuff. Go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com, go to the merchandise page, and then, well, that's the Joe Business page, as you know, and there'll be an Amazon link there lurking. Now, I've been told it's it's invisible sometimes if you have an ad blocker. So, uh, hmm. I guess the only thing I can think of is then you would go to the Facebook fan club page and we have a permanent link there. I think it's at the top of the page. Our buddy Adam went ahead and did that as well because Adam cares about my career. Wouldn't that be cool if I joined him? Uh, but he's the best and, and you're the best. And anybody who uses the Amazon link is absolutely the best. We get money, they get money, you get stuff. Thank you for thinking of us. It makes me very happy. Uh, Patreon exists. Well, yes, it does. I have a Patreon page. Uh, it's specifically geared to support me because I don't put a show up on time. Hi, I'm going to talk you out of Patreon before I even talk you into it. Um, Patreon exists. If you want to become a patron, that would be fantastic. Let's throw out a special hello and a hi and a thank you to our great friend, Ellen O'Connell, who, uh, who reached out and uh, increased her Patreon this week. Not unlike I said Murph did last week. Well, Ellen O'Connell increased her Patreon this week, and it made me uh, incredibly happy. And thank you. Because, again, we took a beating for, for some reason for two months we lost. <laughs> like, since the beginning of the year, I've, I've gone downhill. Maybe it's because I'm putting the show out on fucking Fridays. Who the fuck knows? Uh, but Ellen stepped up in a very nice way, and I thank her. Um, and, and she's just the best. She was talking about maybe being in Canada. I owe, I owe her a text. Hi, I owe everybody a fucking text and a phone call and, and anybody who's ever contacted me in the world, email our buddy, Mark Mascalino, our buddy, uh, uh, George Guitari, everybody who writes me, please know I read them and I will respond to them. I do. And I will. Um, but you're very nice to think of me and thank you for including me and reaching out the way that you did. And I will write you a note back because why not? That's how it works, right? Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Answer these fucking things. <sighs> Hi. There's an article in the New York Times today about uh, podcasts, and it was there's a woman on the cover, and she's uh, she's look I don't want to she's she's attractive, and I think that's why she got the cover story. And then her story was about starting a podcast, and she started a podcast called the Advice Podcast, and uh, she thought she and her co-host this guy they were like well you know we should get a sponsor and we'll get sponsorships rolling in we'll get a bunch of money we'll be rolling in, in it and it'll be great. And then after six episodes they were like oh man we're not making anything, and so they quit. And so they're the subject of this article talking about how hard podcasting is. And uh, I, I, I read this and I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. I, I don't I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys last week, but it, it, this came up as well. There's uh, another podcast that I, I saw online on Twitter or something promoting themselves. And I'm sure they're lovely people. I don't know them. I've never met them. But they literally put out a tweet and it said, uh, you know, they want you to subscribe to their podcast, whatever the fuck. And they go, Hey, episode 20 of our podcast comes out this week and it's a best of, you should check it out. It's the best of the, of the 19 episodes we've done of this podcast. It's amazing. Go ahead. And I'm just like, you motherfuckers, the gall, the naked fucking 
I, 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 I get worried because I put out a fucking show late. I get worried. I, I've done 600 fucking shows and I've done reruns. Probably I'm going to say 15 reruns over the course of fucking 15 years or 11 years, however long it's fucking been. Uh, once when I had the swine flu, I did a show anyway. I mean, it's like, it just, it made me laugh. And this person's like, yeah, I did six episodes and then nothing happened. So we decided, yeah, we just went ahead and tanked it. Uh, it's really expensive and timely to do and costs a lot to do a podcast. I'm like, what, what the fuck? I don't. And again, I, I shouldn't bitch. Cause I mean, I always tell you how hard it is. I'm like, oh man, it's very difficult sometimes to sit down and just fucking talk. Um, but these are people who are doing an advice show and getting emails and talking. How you can't have a conversation every week. But the thing is, I think they bailed because they weren't making money in six weeks. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Are you kidding me? You're not making money in six fucking weeks. That's so stupid. That's like if I went, if I went right now and I went to go fucking play, play baseball. And I, I popped up and I made it out and I go, ah, oh, fuck, this baseball thing is crazy hard. And I left and I bailed. I took six swings and fucking split the fuck out of here. Look around, read the room, because you know what? If you're on Twitter or social media, you see the just the very volume of podcasts are hitting you like a fucking pie in the face. They're hitting you like a milkshake in an Antifa fucking raid. What the fuck, man? Everybody's getting caught with that shit. But this person bailed. Yeah, I'm sorry. We did six and it fucking it made me go. I, I just I, I had to take off. And I mean, it's. You know, my, my show's hard to do just because it's my fucking haunted skull, all right? But everybody else's hard show is hard to do because they got to line up guests and they got to produce it. Like, someone was like, then I read on Twitter, someone's like, hey, man, you got to have a script supervisor, you got to have a fucking sound engineer, you got to have it. I'm like, whoa, all right, wait, I think somebody else is going all the way around to the other end of the spectrum there. What the fuck are you doing? Do you know, how about this? You need a makeup person for your fucking podcast? Maybe you got something like that. You need a voice coach? What the fuck? Open the microphone and talk. And look, I know it's not that easy because I, I'm telling you right now, it's not that fucking easy. And I resent it when people call me and they're just like, hey, why don't you just fucking talk, man? Why don't you just fucking, you know, you can do it. Just open the microphone and talk. Well, sometimes it's a fucking slog. Case in point. Hi, Friday morning. How are you doing? But at the same fucking time, those people who've just, who've just started and have two co-hosts, that's my favorite part. They got two co-hosts or a co-host where the fuck like, yeah, nah, uh, this is really difficult. Oh my God. You know, the energy required to, to what? Have a conversation? Jesus fucking Christ. And I shouldn't judge. What the fuck am I talking about? Again, we're coming in late. We're coming in hot, but we're coming in late again on a Friday. And I totally get that. But at the same fucking time, man, it just it, six episodes. It, it made me fucking laugh. And, and, and I don't. But again, the problem is everybody's funny. That's, I've talked about it. It's America is an open mic. Everybody. It's the, the United States of yes. And I just saw a thing. I'm glad I waited a day, I guess, to do this because I got to see the cats trailer today. You see the trailer for cats. The movie cats is coming out. Cats is a play from when I was a kid. And it's a, it's a bunch of fucking, it's like Rum Tum Tugger and Mr. Mr. Meow Stoffelis, whatever the fuck. And it's cats who are people or they're not really people. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. And they take catnip and they have drug fights and whatever the fuck. And they're all happy and they sing. And they made a cats movie. And the cast is ridiculous. Like Taylor Swift is in it. Fucking Dame Judi Dench. Ian McKellen is in it. Fucking Jennifer Hudson is in it. I mean, these are, these are talented people. And the trailer comes out and I watched it and, and Twitter lost its mind. They're, they're destroying it. They're making fun of it. They're going, oh my God, what a fucking, it's so crazy. It's, and I'm just like, yeah, it looks like a fever dream where cats become people. But at the same fucking time, this, this piece of work has been around for 40 fucking years, right? 80, 90, 2000, 2000, now 30 years, probably. I don't fucking know. All I know is when I was a kid, there were fucking plenty of commercials for cats to go watch it at the Amundsen or whatever the fuck. And I, I would see the commercial and they would show the people in the goofy ass cat outfits and they'd all sing memory and whatever the fuck. And I guess. I don't know if one of them wants to become a person at the end of the night. Is it like a twilight zone where there are one mannequin, one cat gets like a year to be a person. Then he has to come back and be a cat again. I don't fucking know the plot because I'm not a musical guy. I mean, I love musicals when I see them, but I don't go to see musicals at the theater. Usually it wasn't really my thing to do, but when I go see them, I do enjoy them. So at the same time I saw this trailer and I'm like, this just looks like fucking cats, right? Isn't this what cats was? But everybody's losing their mind. They're going crazy. Oh my God. These fucking cats, they have human breasts and they're dancing around and what the fuck. And I'm just like, dudes, what the there's, this is cats. Again, like I said, it's a fever dream of just cats becoming people and then dance around in an alley and whatever the fuck. There's nothing really to fucking get worked up about. It's just, this is exactly what this has always been forever. Do young people not know what the fuck that is? I, now, look, I will understand this. If you're horrified by the appearance of James Corden, then I would totally understand that because that guy is just a tub of cockney garbage. There's no doubt about that. That dude, I, I don't know who he fucking 
Rogered in England, and I think that's the vernacular that they use over there to become famous or anybody or anything. And look, I know I'm blowing my chance of doing the show or whatever the fuck. I'm sure he's a lovely man. He employs people I know, and they're great, and that's fine. But every story I've heard about him is he is a classic fucking gas bag. And I would like, I, and then I saw him in the movie. Then he's dressed like Devito was the penguin, and he does a belly bump on another fucking thing. He spits on another cat, and I'm like, dude, wait, did they just? Is this like cats featuring James Corden? Like maybe that's what it is. And they're like, you know what? Let's let everybody else be a fucking cat. And then James Corden will just like fart on guys and belly bump them and will spit on them just like James Corden would do. So he's just James Corden as a cat. Everybody else is like rum tug, whatever the fuck. And, uh, and all these other guys and they're all just fucking doing their shit. And Rebel Wilson's in it. And she's, oh, she's great, isn't she? Uh, she's in there doing her stuff, Taylor Swift. And I guess, and there's some young ballet dancer and they're jumping around and they're, they're being cats and that's fine. And then James Corden comes in and just James Corden's the shit out of everybody. Hello, governor. Shut the fuck up. You weird ass, unbelievably mean to service people, hacky chimney sweep motherfucker. How did it happen? How did that guy break through? Come to a throne if you're not gonna suck a dick. 